Woo! Okay, there. Hello, there hello, hello, hello. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, it's our first official episode called The Kaiju Menace. Uh, if you can't tell from the title, we are not just into Godzilla as well, but Star Wars and everything geeky. But the main point of this show is to do with Kaiju. So, oh, you got an echo there. Okay. Someone is playing the stream as well. Can you turn it up? What was that, Helmy? Someone has it might be YouTube. It might be feedback on your computer because I don't hear anything. I, yeah, I don't uh, hear anything. All right, all good, all good. Same. All right, welcome back, everybody. We're so glad to be doing this, and we're going to talk about some fun stuff today, and we're going to talk about my personal favorite Godzilla film. <laughs> Let's all introduce yes. ourselves, starting with yeah. Helmy, right? Or do you need to Me? go last? Uh, yeah. I want to go last. So Greg, let's go with you. Nah, okay. come on. All right, all right, all right. Uh, my name is Greg. I love kaiju. I love monster movies. I love all sorts of geeky stuff. Um, my favorite kaiju is Rodan, hence my nickname, Brodan. Uh, my very first Godzilla film I ever saw was Godzilla vs. Monster Zero at uh, about four years old. I got it from a... Uh, uh, the video barn we rented it and my life was forever changed oh i want to be told old sucker <laughs> what's up guys right. i'm a uh, action creature or devon is my actual name but action creature is my youtube just gonna plug that right there real quick and <laughs> uh you know i obviously love godzilla too king kong gamera those are my top three um but yeah, my first Godzilla movie I ever saw was uh, Godzilla 1985. My first exposure was Godzilla versus Bambi, and I was just instantly hooked right there. You know, everything changed. <laughs> but yeah, that's me. Anastasia, next. Hello, I'm Anastasia. I love gigantic scale uh, Godzilla collectibles. Um, my fav first movie was actually the MonsterVerse movies. Uh, but my favorite Godzilla movie is 1962 Godzilla vs. King Kong. But I don't like King Kong. Don't get me wrong. But that movie is my favorite. That's my favorite too. I love it. Good that choice. It's uh, my... The beefcake wow. boy. Such a good Godzilla. It's in my top three, but let's come correct. It's King Kong vs. Godzilla. <laughs> mm. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Yep, my name is Charles, uh, or Haugen Kobo, which is the uh, the handle that I post all of my kits and stuff through. Um, my first exposure to uh, Godzilla was probably, I want to say it was 1962. Got the VHS of that when I was a little kid, and shortly after we got 64. So those are my first two films. Uh, first, like, collectible uh exposure was definitely trend masters 40th anniversary box set that was the first like thing i ever got and then i had to get all the armored ones too shortly after uh and now i primarily do kits so yeah and uh, also i'm i'm in philadelphia right now so my setup is really? the last time and that's why <laughs> i mean oh, yeah. i love the uh the baby posters man uh they had a really nice touch so <laughs> you know, you know, mm-hmm is yeah. it just a random baby or is it a, sp a specific baby? Uh, is it you? I don't know. It, it's it's her uh, it's her family's house, so I don't. Know. So okay, it's okay. definitely you then. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I this is right. yeah. I wanted this room. I was like, I want that picture. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Uh, so my name's Helmy, and I am a huge Godzilla fan. I. Been a huge fan since I was a kid. Some of you may know this story where um, I didn't come out as a Godzilla fan until a couple of years ago because, you know, as a kid, you get bullied a lot and it's not fun. And you kind of hide away. And one of the reasons why I love Godzilla so much is because he is... No one bullies with Godzilla, man. No one messes with Godzilla. You could bitch slap him around a bit, but he will come back and he'll mess you up. So I love that, right? And I first movie i caught was godzilla 92 the one with mothra um and, and i fell in love with him i caught it with my granddad when i was young 
Um, we stayed up late watching Godzilla movies, wrestling movies. I think Godzilla and wrestling, uh, um, sorry, wrestling shows like WWE and all that. And I find that there's a lot of similarities and stuff between those two. And on top of that, um, I built a home cinema dedicated to Godzilla because I love Godzilla so much. And it was a memory to my granddad and all the good times I had with him. So that was me. Um, you know, yeah, and yeah, this stream is PG thirteen, so keep it uh, you no, know classy. This stream is R. This stream is R rated. Uh, yeah, PG thirteen limits us to one f bomb. I oh, know. So we, like, come on. Man. Okay, who who calls it? I do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I want to say real quick, you know, it seems like yeah. it doesn't matter what Godzilla movie you, you see first. Like, I feel like so many people have different answers to that. And it's just like, mm. no matter which one it is, like, you're instantly hooked for some reason. Like, even if it's 98, like, a lot of people say their first movie is 98, and they still love Godzilla. Mm -hmm. That was my and then... 16th film. And... <laughs> 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 that... That was probably my 10th film, I think, was my number, number 10. Uh, even then, back then, I was like, what the heck was this shit? Um, moving on from that, we have, uh, what's this? Uh, ASMR, okay. Uh, and yes, we have uh, our format That's called, uh, so it's uh, uh, collector um, pickups, uh, review, and then we have um what is it what is that? Acquisitions. Okay. acquisitions acquisitions sorry and then p is post um port discussions so um yeah let's start with c what's c again collectibles <laughs> collectibles yeah exactly yeah so um let's showcase all the collectible stuff that we know that we love we want to share with the crowd and stuff like that so charles let's do this i got you I got you. You got me. And, uh, and Devin's going first, correct? Mm hmm. Greg. I know, Greg. Okay. Greg, Greg. Okay. Yeah. Greg? Okay. Let me, me get Greg's stuff pulled up here. Give me a second. There's not too much uh, new in the Sofubi scene since uh, Wonderfest was last month, but there's a couple cool things. All right, Greg. Sandworm time. Let's do this. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well All right. I mean, yep. Good. Yeah. At the stage. There, there we, we go. go. All right. So right off the bat, this is a Tig Toy Mecha Godzilla. They just uh, dropped this teaser a couple days ago, and Tig Toy is very, very, very high quality Sofubi. Um, so this will be highly sought after, very collectible. But I'm going to be really honest here. This might be a hot take. I don't like the proportions on this, and normally I really like Tig Toy's stuff, but I don't know. His head just looks a little flat to me, and it just he, yeah, he is a little kind of stubby. I think yeah, <laughs> I, I and and this is the only image that's been released so far so i'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and maybe it's kind of like a guy kushu goji it's going to look good from angles so but right there was now that, first... sorry there was that video of it at wonderfest with the light up eyes and stuff oh cool i didn't see that how did it look uh in different angles i mean it looks good i think like yeah you know, I would love to get one, but I'm sure uh, they're not going to release a painted one. So it's probably going to be a blank. And, uh, you know, I don't even know how you get Tig Toy besides like the random collabs they do with Spiral. Yeah. So, I mean, I'll keep my eyes open. And if I if, if I learn anything more about how to acquire the Tig Toy Mechagodzilla, I'll let you know. Uh, both the audience here as well as my good buddy Devin. But, um, yeah, first impressions leave me wanting a little bit more next okay so we'll go through these pretty quickly uh these are the ccp small scale figures so they're going to be about uh four or five inches about the size of the one-up figures um again you know th these leave me wanting more i gotta say i like the translucent space godzilla a little bit better than the painted one um but i'm also not a huge fan of ccp sofubi um, I feel like it's just kind of overproduced and 
Yeah. I'm being a negative Nancy right now. I'm sorry. Don't, there is some <laughs> stuff in here that I actually really do like. Why don't you go ahead and go through the, the next one too? Cause that's also CCP. Yep. Now this, oh, okay. This cool. I like this. I like, this looks really good. Both of them, the black and the translucent, the translucent I think is really, really cool. Cause it's like reminiscent of the scene in 1974 when the fake Godzilla skin melts off of him and it gets all sparkly and glittery. And Mecha Godzilla mm -hmm. has that amazing reveal with that boss jazz score by Masara Sato. I can't wait to review that movie. All right, let's go ahead and look at the next one. So great. How big was that one? Was it three, four inches as well? Yeah, They're same. About, these all of yeah. these are yeah, all of these are like the same scale. All of the, these fat last three images. And okay. uh this is uh CCP hetera, which if it's anything like any other CCP hetera, just wait, there's gonna be a thousand more of these things in every colorway imaginable um decent decent uh I, not as good as the mecha godzilla but he's not bad he's kind of cute greg is this the small scale or is this uh their normal size adora stuff do you know no this is still the small scale this is all in that that new small scale line okay all right what's next oh yeah. i like this i really really <laughs> like this this is a metacom and raku and saku uh lottery figure and it's gappa the trifibian monster now, you know, you, you can choose whether that's Baby Gappa or Mama Gappa, but for those who've never seen Gappa, the Triphibian monster, um, it's just Gorgo uh, transposed to Japan. It's almost an identical story, um, but it's, it's cool. And Gappa is a really cool monster and you don't see Gappa figures that often. And I really think this is rather charming and I might even consider going for it. Yeah, that's how much that's a nice Gappa. Well, the Ansaku figures, if you win the lottery, they're usually about 120 to 150. I, have, I haven't gotten an Ansaku figure in a minute, but they're very affordable when you win the lotteries. Yeah. Mix. Okay, now this one's been bugging me. This is Devil Man, obviously, and it's it's really cool. This is a really, really, really cool uh, Sofubi. And I, I don't know who manufactured this because... Helmy put it on my radar. I want to say it looks like a Metacom to me, but I am not entirely sure. If anybody in TV land has any info about this, I would like to know more. Um, it's just a really cool Sofubi. I like I like his muscles and I like his hands and his claws. And this it is from um, from Michael. Michael Hing was the one that told me about this figure, um, and he is killing it in terms of all the sofu bees he's picking up a lot of sofu bees right now yeah i yeah. like it i i think it's cool all right and yeah. is that all for the sofu bee this month there might be one more oh yeah oh okay uh, yeah. heavy hitter alert heavy hitter alert okay so this is mondo this actually uh became available just the other day it's still available in the mondo shop it's 240 dollars for the set and this is the All Monsters Attack set, obviously. You get yourself a really awesome Gabra, who is underloved in the kaiju collecting community, just as his movie is underloved and underappreciated. I love All Monsters Attack. We'll get around to talking about that at some point. And you get this cute little big-eyed Manila over here. This Minya, he's so adorable. And um, the uh, the 69, the Godzilla over here, Soshingeki Goji. Um, it's, it's a good sculpt. Uh, I feel like they did the 67 spines on him, though. It's almost like a hybrid of 67 and 69. Uh, Devin and I were even having a discussion about it the other day when they revealed him from the back. And yeah, turns out he's a 69. Um, you know, the mouth they, is a little funky for me. What were you going to say, Devin? They could, uh, they could have done that because they might plan to reuse the body and do a 67 set. That That would tend to make sense. That would be pretty cool um yeah so i like this a lot but i really do want to keep my focus pretty narrow these days um i might have to grab this though because i really do love godzilla's revenge all monsters attack it needs to get more love and i know a lot of people are going to disagree with me and oh it's horrible it's terrible i like it not many I like this is, out this there. mondo Right. This is Mondo. Mondo. This is yeah. available on the Mondo shop right now as we speak for $240. And for getting three figures for $240, that's not bad. And being that it's Mondo, you're going to get a gigantic box with really cool artwork on it as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Mondo has really been improving their Sofubi uh, with each successive release. 
I will still say though that their vinyl is still rather hard and thick. Uh, it's it's not quite soft vinyl yet, but some people like things hard and thick. So you know, there's a market out there for it. Will it ever be as good as That's the question. <laughs> Hey Chris, uh, thanks for joining uh, us. Mr. Clavero. What up, Chris? Um, yeah. I will say Mondo does like to do a lot of variants of their sculpts. So if you're if you want a glow one or a, or a different color scheme, you know, probably hold off for that because I'm sure it, it's in the pipeline. Oh, definitely. They'll most likely do a glow cherry blossom for San Diego Comic Con because that's what they've been doing every year since they start, started Sofubi. Mm -hmm. And the glow cherry blossom when it's not glowing is gorgeous uh, and they finally got the glow figured out because i have the biolanti and the 84 and they don't glow for anything but the uh the rodan has a nice glow on them finally nice awesome uh next person is uh Devin. what does Devin have I got a lot of stuff. Uh, so, Lots. guys, every every time we do this uh, show, I'll be covering all the articulated stuff. That's my thing, especially if you go to my channel. I only review articulated stuff, and that's pretty much all I collect. I do get some Safubi time to time. But, um, yeah, so I will be your articulation guy. So starting up here, we have a new version of the Haya King Ghidorah from King of the Monsters. And uh, this is kind of like that special color version from SH Monster Arts. The only difference here is it has like a gold paint scheme now. And it also comes with the uh, laser beams, uh, which the first release did not come with, unfortunately. So if you want those, you'll have to double dip. This is uh, up for pre-order right now on Big Bad Toy Store. And other retailers uh we got one more picture of it yeah legendary thought it was a good idea to make king Ghidorah brown <laughs> yeah not sure what they were yeah. thinking so if, you know if you want your own version that's kind of more show accurate here you go this one does look pretty nice i'll probably get this one too just keep it in the box but uh yeah so that's it for that one Ooh. Uh, yeah, up next we got the uh, black and white version of the SH Monster Arts Minus One. So if you missed out on the first Minus One, I know that one's going for like 200 bucks now, which sucks. But, you know, maybe they'll re-release it. If not, this is an option. You got the black and white one now. Um, and this being released might even drop the price of the uh, original release. So this, I think, might be up for pre-order now. Um so go check that out. Look on Big Bad Toy Store. I'm not sure if it's up yet, but on to the next. I wonder one. if X, I wonder if X Plus is going to do a minus color. Do you think they will? Yes, for the uh, for the one that, that that's on pre-order right now. I mean, it's too easy, dude. They did the sculpt. They might as well. You know, people are going to get yeah. suckered into it. Yeah, I just hope that. I mean, I imagine the sales are going well. I mean, the the uh, the Rick sold out right within a few hours on the rick mm -hmm. site and they had to like i think jeremy soul said they had to like they're gonna make another wave it's like yeah they'll they'll do a minus color as long as it sells good yeah, yeah you know real, what real quick uh sorry yeah, to interrupt, bud. i go just ahead. wanted to get your opinion what do you think is better the sh monster arts minus one or the super seven minus one well the super seven minus one isn't out yet we've just seen the uh the 3d render and super seven always only has 3d renders for pre-order so you really never know how it's going to turn out um i will say i'm sure the minus one is probably going to be better <laughs> i mean sorry not minus one the monster arts is probably going to be better just at least in terms of t articulation and you know super seven kind of has like soft sculpts too but we'll see i'm kind of a super seven hater so <laughs> i was gonna say you guys have to check out action creatures super seven reviews they are yes. comedy gold <laughs> yeah they're uh yeah super seven they have their niche i think they do great stuff for like you know little godzillas and stuff like that um but articulated Devin, Devin, figures like, i just don't see in, why in they're his, doing them in his super seven reviews he actually sounds like angry. <laughs> what the fuck is this? Like, what is this shit? You know, it's hilarious. Yeah. Definitely check out his channel. 
Yeah, they're they're disappointing figures, at least for in the Godzilla realm. The Ninja Turtle stuff is okay, but that's besides the point. Anyways, uh, I feel like this movie slash show, whatever it is, has kind of gone under a lot of people's radars. There's going to be a Netflix original Ultraman movie, I think. Do you guys know? Yep. Movie? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. my and, friend uh, this... Your friend is what? My friend worked on the movie. Wow, really? Uh, I, I tried to get him to put in my name, you know, somewhere, but nah, it didn't happen. <laughs> hey, well, you know what? Uh, the next podcast, if the movie's out by then, maybe we can get him on to talk about it. That'd be pretty cool. That'd be cool. I'd be down to review that as well, too. That would be really cool. Nah, he got, he's got an NDA and all that stuff, so nah. <laughs> he can't talk about <laughs> after it after it's been released? Out. Uh, I think there's a time frame, um, so maybe after the time frame or something. Oh yeah, of course. That's what that's what we're saying, Helmy. <laughs> no, we wanted to lose his job. Time. Get him yeah. on the show right now. <laughs> yeah, right now. <laughs> call him. Call him right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, this is the uh, SH Figure Arts. Uh, it's their version of this Netflix Ultraman, and you know, it actually looks pretty cool. I, I dig it. Um, I didn't include another picture with this, but it comes with a little baby kaiju. I have no idea what kaiju it is, but it looks cute. Um, but yeah, that's really all I have to say about this. Looks cool. Um, oh, looks should be cool, up though. for pre-order soon. I like What'd the proportions. He really looks alien. Yeah. I really dig it. Yeah, it does look cool. Yeah. Um, so oh. this, has, this has not been officially solicited by Haya uh, Toys yet. I'm not looking at it. It uh, it was dude. Leaked you gotta somehow. do a spoiler warning, bro. Bro, he's that in could the be any kaiju. He's in the That's trailer. That's just my dog. <laughs> I didn't watch it. I don't watch it. Oh god. Okay, well, you know, if if it's a spoiler, then well, uh, you just shit, heard Helmy's sorry. heart. <laughs> um, I'm not looking at this is screen. this is uh, Shimu from. You know, the upcoming Godzilla movie, New Empire. Uh, yep, hasn't been officially solicited yet. No idea on price, but it does look really good. Yeah, Sham, wow. Yeah, yeah, Shimu, right? That's how you say it? Yeah, yeah, Shimu. I just, I no, joke it, with Wyatt. I call him a Sham it's pronounced Wow. pronounced Sham Wow. Oh, sh yeah, Sham Wow. Okay. It's Sham Wow. <laughs> I'm holding out hope that. Uh, okay, help me plug your ears. I'm holding out hope that um, this actually turns out to be like the first really cool and iconic uh, legendary kaiju, um, because like I think the Mudos were really bland and kind of boring. boring. I didn't hate them; they were just kind of bland and boring. They're like C tier, and then the kaiju that which we'll talk about in our review uh, from King of the Monsters again. We're just there's a lot of blandness there. This this definitely looks like it has some personality though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Mutos. Um... It's like they took the 2000s like superhero design, like just all black, and they're like, let's do a monster of <laughs> all black, no colors. I right, go to the next uh, picture so Helmy can not be harmed. Okay. Uh <laughs> ah, shit, another one. Uh, oh, come on, Helmy. You've seen, you haven't been inside of a Target, Helmy? Come on. <laughs> no, nah, no, nothing. I refuse to see anything to do with the new movie. Okay, go ahead. Okay, Me too. Well, this is, I haven't uh, even this... watched the trailers. I'm that. that stringent about not spoiling anything all right my yeah. friends from down under close your eyes for the next couple minutes <laughs> so this has been officially solicited and it is up for pre-order if you guys want it but this is the evolved version of the Hyatt toys godzilla it's like their first new godzilla sculpt like because pretty much everything else has been reused up until this point um godzilla wise uh they have a, a bunch of other awesome figures and yeah there's another picture of it there it looks pretty good looks accurate this figure was pretty controversial in the facebook groups everyone's saying like this is inaccurate what is wrong with this thing but i don't i don't see the complaints um looks accurate to me you know the sunken in belly and all that stuff. I mean, that's how it looks in the trailer. So, I mean, I don't know what to tell yeah. you. I, I was going to say is the inaccuracies that they're saying, actually, because Godzilla looks different in this movie. Yeah, he de yeah, he definitely looks really weird in the movie, but that's not Hayatoy's mm. fault. Yeah. So. 
I I like the aspect of the legendary films though that we're getting slight tweaks to the Godzilla design each film. Um, it's it's almost like a Showa throwback where I I like Godzilla's looking different. Well, Greg, if they didn't change it, they couldn't sell toys. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> what, what about SH Monster Arts? How many times have they done the 2019 sculpt? <laughs> well, yeah, you know they they definitely reuse the hell out of that, but that's just a toy company. I'm just saying, like, you know, if the movies didn't change the designs, there's no reason for people to pick up new ones. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, Monster Arts might have reused that one to death, but I don't own any of them, so because Haya is better. Okay. <laughs> You're not a true Monster Arts fan anymore. It's unfortunate. Hey, I still got all the other ones. But anyways, next one. All right. Next now one. Helmy can look. Now Helmy yeah. can look. So okay. this is from the new movie as well. It's pretty much just a repaint of uh, the 2019 Godzilla. It's just he's a little more dusty. I won't say why he's dusty. But uh, yeah, so we got okay. a dusty Godzilla here. <laughs> okay. And this is also for pre-order and Hyatt Toys as well. Next. 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 Oh, another, picture, no. another picture of it there. Looks pretty good. I'm surprised like you didn't job on you don't it. have the you don't have the ninety one on here. It's not up. That, There's that no like Hyatt? pictures of it. Oh yeah. Well that came out like yeah. so long ago now. But uh, yeah, and, yeah, and, there is a right, Haya Toys right. uh, '91 Godzilla. If y'all want to go look that up, <laughs> one of the best Godzilla's design designs ever. Yeah, it, he has gotten a lot of figures lately. Like Monster Arts has done one, Super Seven did one, and now Haya Toys has done one. It's like every company has to do one for some reason. It's kind of He's annoying, old. but but uh, yeah, the Haya Toys one does look really good. Mm-hmm. Are you ready for the next one? Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. All right. Oh, so this is, nice, nice. This is a re-release here. It's a the Monster Arts Mogira still comes with all the same stuff, but the thing that's new about this one is the base that he's on right there. So that's pretty cool. So if you pick up the reissue, you get that base now, which is nice. And I think I got one more picture of that. Yeah, still looks really good. Looks pretty much the same. Uh, they didn't change anything about the figure. Didn't update it in any way, but. I don't think they need to. The original still holds up I'm, today. I'm assuming it doesn't light up, right? Does not light up, no. Okay, cool. The eyes are kind of reflective, though. I think they have like kind of a mirror uh, material yeah. behind the yellow, and uh, they look good. Ooh, that's rough. Is it really that bad? I don't think so. It is weird. I never really liked Mogira just because of how thick he is <laughs> but, he's very uh, bottom heavy he looks yeah, like an I've, old fat soccer mom I've grown I love, to love him. <laughs> <Thick is the best. laughs> uh it's like they designed him based off of uh the heisei godzilla they're like yeah just give it big hips let's go move on <laughs> <laughs> no, i like the show on mogera yeah Anna, what was your comment on big hips <laughs> Nothing wrong with big six hips. We love a, a thick man yeah. or lady. Yeah. Yeah. Hang on. Isn't this Mogera? Guys, essentially... lives. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Isn't this Mogera based on that movie? Um, what is the movie? War the, the Showa movie. You know, guys know what I'm talking about. The Mysterians? You know where he yeah. came from? Yes. <laughs> yeah, the it's, it's the same it's the same mech, just updated design. Yeah. 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 Same yeah. name and everything. Yeah. All right. Next one. I don't know, Moy Chris. I kind of like the hit, man. Kind of looks like a duck, and I like ducks. Okay, so this is a line I'm really excited for. It's about the same size as Monster Arts figures, a little mm. bit bigger, so they'll scale better with Haya toys. But this is Ling Ji Hoon's uh, Pacific Rim. Um, it's got all the articulation. Comes with a bunch of accessories. It's up for pre-order right now on uh, Big Bad toy store and this is uh, gypsy danger here they also have uh, crimson typhoon up for pre-order which looks amazing and they light up as well so they look really cool i'm excited for this line i can't wait um they do also have kaiju coming so 
the NECA ones will no longer be the only option, which is awesome for collectors because those are long out of stock. Uh, what's the size on this one? It's about, I think, like six and a half or seven inches. It's about like the same height as a Haya Godzilla. Seven inches, all right, cool. Six All right, mate. I, I think that's the last one I have. No, no, no. This is oh, oh, yeah, your boy yeah, Blue. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, Charles actually put me onto this line. This is the uh, non moo uh, It's not officially Jurassic Park. It's like third party, but I mean, you're not going to get a better looking Jurassic Park Velociraptor anywhere else right now. I mean, look at that. That's freaking awesome. And these are about the same size as the... Uh, Haya Toys Godzilla figure, so you know, obviously not gonna scale well with any of that stuff. But one six scale figure, or not? Sorry, not one six, one twelve scale figures. Um, these should scale pretty well with those. Um, they look amazing. There's another uh, Raptor there. Yep, and these are up for pre-order on Big Bad Toy Store as well. I've always um, wanted to own Chris Pratt's hey, dog. Yeah, <laughs> these are from Jurassic Park three though. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah. So this is Nanmu, N A N M U. And uh, just look look them up on Big Bad Toy Store and you should see those raptors on there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that is it for me. Oh, God. <laughs> Next up, Charles. I thought it was Anastasia. I thought I was going last, homie. Oh, sorry, my bad, my bad. Now you're looking at last, but yeah, Anastasia, come on, let's do this. Yep, I'm ready. You're so you're rude. My... Oh, sorry, am I sharing my screen or oh, are you no. going to... No, no, I'm uh, there. Charles is doing it. Wow. Yeah. This should be the, the most this recent one. photos. Hmm? Oh, sorry. Is this mine? This isn't my photo. No, no, you can't. She just sent it. You... Didn't she send it? Hold on. Yeah. Yeah, I need to just open it again. Sorry, I had it sitting there and I was... So, as with gigantic scale collectibles, there isn't always like these big new releases, but we thankfully have quite a few updates on releases that have been announced over the last few years and we haven't really seen any information on. Uh, one cool thing that I thought was this army of Shin Godzillas. Uh, so cute. Just to see all their little tails. They remind me of little cats, but... Uh, <laughs> Look like oh. looks like those are ready to be shipped out by Amiga Beast. Um, next one, sorry, next photo. Whoa. Okay, this figure, I swear it has been like what two, three years since it was announced. It's got to be. It was such a long time since this figure was announced, yes. and we're finally seeing an update on it. I almost forgot it existed. Isn't um, there like painted pictures of this, like? This, there is, oh, I think it was like a, I don't know if it was a finished painted model, but we have seen like it painted in promotional photos. I think that was right. just one prototype though, but the most interesting thing about this piece is that it's going to ship as that. No seams, no detachables, just what? this absolutely massive dinosaur. Wow. Can you imagine shipping that to Australia? It's going to cost hundreds. But no. it was just really nice to finally see an update, a reminder that it is being worked on, given it, I think it has been about two years since it was initially announced. It was one of the first ones after they started shipping out those King Ghidorahs that they announced that they were going to sell. So yeah, it's huge, all one piece. Love the fact that there's no seams. The price shipping, however, we'll have to wait yeah. and see. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be a painful one. Hey, quick question. Has Spiral announced any other dinosaurs or was this just kind of a one-off no. thing so this are they i think they intended to announce more because they had like a whole line that they called this i can't remember off yeah. the top of my head what it is but they did like announce this as a line but they haven't announced anything else but that is probably coming off the feedback of they were announcing too much and not putting out enough stuff so they'd announce all these new releases take out all these pre-orders but Still, yeah. they've only released, in, in theory, what, four figures now? Five, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and this was revealed, like, right off the hype of, uh, what was it, Jurassic World 2 or something? That yeah. That came out. Yeah. 
And I think since then, the hype has died. I did hear they're trying to get Scarlett Johansson to, like, head up the next movie, like, be the main character. They're, they're completely, completely rebooting the franchise. Really? Oh, yeah. Well, that's a good any, thing, considering the last movie. Yeah, yeah it's hopefully... not going to have any member, member berries, hopefully. Hopefully it's going to be its own story. Um, and it's not, it's not going to be connected to the Jurassic World or Jurassic Park. There's not going to be Chris Pratt, none of that shit. So it's going to be its own thing. Um, by Gareth and, uh, Edwards. Yeah, yeah, Gareth Edwards is directing. Yeah. Who has a wonderful Wait, really? cinematographer's really? eye. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. Yeah, yeah that should be right good after, then. Right after the creator came out, they like made the announcement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hopefully he learned his lesson from Godzilla and actually like has dinosaurs in the movie <laughs> yeah. or, or hopefully he, he has a the jaws man i mean i don't i don't hate 2014 or anything like it. it's one of my favorite legendary movies but you know more godzilla would help anyways <laughs> now i only want to see uh the t-rex on a uh, kitchen tv that's it you know like that's the way they're showing it, that's it. <laughs> that's like 2014. it pisses me off every time um next one uh who's next yeah it... it's photo oh, oh sorry i got one more one more to talk about oh, yeah. don't cut me off yet uh so we've also got another look at the godzilla minus one sculpt uh in the alpha kaiju series by expert sculptor Kay and lynn looking very nice i can't say anything bad about it, it looks fantastic every one of his sculpts hit so yeah i, I feel like the head like he kind of looks more evil than he does like you oh know, definitely you, i, I don't know if it's at... just the grayness but yeah definitely yeah like when you're looking at minus one from the front he looks kind of cute because he has like big cheeks like a chipmunk <laughs> but here <laughs> he looks like he looks evil <laughs> yeah I was, I, was gonna gonna say too, I was gonna say too um I actually messaged Andrew Wong because I was asking him if uh, if this was going to be for sale at, at the Omega Beast room for G-Fest. Because, you know, like at the last G-Fest, they had a bunch of the uh, Alpha Kaiju series uh, 2019s there, like the Roaring Blue and all that. Um, hmm. It's looking like Omega Beast may not be coming to G-Fest this year. Well, yeah, uh, the, no! vendors list, Apparently, the vendors list came yeah. out and they weren't on it. Because uh, Kinlin, Kinlin and uh, Andrew Wong uh, have a meeting with Toho that's going to be lining up right around G-Fest. So they might actually be in Japan at Toho Studios instead of like at G-Fest. Yeah, that sucks. Uh, disappointing. Yeah. That was definitely one of the coolest booths we went to while we were oh, there. Yeah, like, dude, even though I'm not a huge OB fan, but it was just so cool to see him in person. I like that. Mm -hmm. Oh man, that's a bummer. I, 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 their booth was probably one of my top three ones, easily. I love it. I love mm. it so much. Yeah. That's a bummer. That's a bummer. Oh. Not Next going anymore. <laughs> you, you better be going. Oh. I think Is it me? Everyone, <laughs> I think everyone in this uh, show, except for Anastasia, is going for GFS. So uh, if we see you guys there, please say hi. Yeah, right. we're gonna. I could still come. What? Come on, let's do it. So we I can do a show maybe. from G-Fest. It depends if BlizzCon is on. Too close. Okay. Gee, we have we had a great G time. You should definitely come. You won't regret it. Yeah. yeah. Is anyone Devin gonna and I saw ticket? 98 in the theater and made out. <laughs> oh, what was it? Any season? No, I made a joke about if I'm paying for my own tickets or not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hey guys, uh, you know, yeah. donate to our Patreon. Let's let's get Anastasia. <laughs> our GoFundMe. <laughs> yeah, hit up the super chats. Come on, y'all. <laughs> Next person. I tell right. Is it is my turn? Is it my turn, yeah. Yeah, It's your turn. It's my turn? Really? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, not a lot on the kit front. Um, I do want to share Ooh. Kuda Furumi is working on a uh, plant beast uh, uh, bio. And this thing looks really cool. 
what I'm thinking this is, is he is uh, looking at the uh, Noriyoshi 1989 yep. poster. That's the poster version, absolutely. Because, yes, because everything that Kuda Furumi usually does is very screen accurate. He usually does very, you know, he he did he's done a lot of really great Biolantes and Rose Biolantes. Uh, yeah, Rose Beast, not Plant Beast, Rose Beast. But, uh, but yeah, so this is something he's working on. He's 3D sculpting it. Uh, this is one of his previous uh, Rose Biolante bodies. In this post, he's just talking about using it as reference for this uh, 3D sculpt. I don't know if he typically does 3D sculpting or if this is a new thing, but either way, if this means that we're going to get a Noriyoshi uh, kit by Kuder Furumi, it's going to be fantastic. Um, Dude, it looks amazing. And, yeah, I just want to see. Can you, can you, can you, can I get one and then you paint it for me? Yes. I'm paying for it. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just pay shipping. It is really yeah, cool looking. Shipping. That's, you know, Rose Violante yeah. doesn't really look very cool most of the time, I feel like, but that is really badass. Dude, so, I really love, you love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, and here, this is by Jonathan It. Um, does anybody remember that, uh, that Destroya, um, that was at Wonderfest, this, the really stylized one that was like 50 centimeters tall at the tip of the wing, um, and it had like the huge wings, because I, I, I showed it in the last podcast that we did. He also did a, uh, Super Godzilla style, uh, Space Godzilla, kind of like what Suzuki did. Um, but this is a new thing he's working on for, uh, I think he's going to make it a Wonderfest exclusive as well. Um, this is in honor of the 50th anniversary of 1974. Cool. It looks amazing. It's so funny with this design, like how does the, the, the end of the tail move? Because like, you know, Mechagodzilla's tail is so short, but... Uh, <laughs> He's like a it's Terminator. Think it's, about. It's, yeah. it's flesh yeah, over ma machine. <laughs> this yeah. definitely yeah, is really cool, look. though. What's the scale of this? What's the size? What's the what? Sorry. What's the size on this one? The the scale? Yeah. Um, I, I'm not sure on the scale. Um, it's still it's still in the 3D sculpting process. I think he's doing this in a. And ZBrush, I think. Um, okay. So he, you know, it, it's just going to depend on on what he either prints it or molds it at. You know. Just hey, to... uh, Charles, what's the size on this one? Did you not hear what I said? <laughs> <laughs> He's not me, sure. Buddy. I'm Sorry. gonna beat you up, Devin. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> right. Egg mock. This thing, I want it so bad. This is uh, Haro Nakajima, Godzilla 1954. Him in the in the suit, putting his headband on. I have pestered Eggmok over and over and over again about buying this, and he keeps telling me it's going to be a Wonderfest exclusive. So uh, he's oh not going to be able to sell it online. Hang on, is it on summer? Is it the summer Wonderfest? So this is licensed. Yes. I will pick it up for yeah. you. It's going to be a one-day license. Yeah, I'll be there. I'll You'll be get at it one for me? Yeah, dude, I will. I will do ungodly things to your body. But yeah, <laughs> this is the kit. <laughs> he recently turned turn Helmy into the Shodai Goji from this pose, and that's what you can do to him to get the kit. Dude, this thing's amazing. <laughs> I, I so I really want a, Har a Haro Nakajima, uh, you know, in a Godzilla suit like figure, but. As you know, I'm not big on Sofubi, so I never went with like it was what M1 M1, M1. did the, the Nakajima, yeah. So I I never wanted that, you know. But this dude, look how crispy! Look at the details on this, and he just casted it, and he's got the box art made and everything. Um, now this guy's awesome, man. And he's so talented. Uh, it's interesting because he typically sculpts a lot of like animals, like orangutans and stuff like that. Um, but this is the first Godzilla thing, Godzilla related thing I've seen from him. Um, and it just looks fantastic. I've 
Yeah, I'm it's in a so sculptor's cool, group, and this dude randomly posted this like a long time ago yeah. when it was still like not fully, you know, complete or anything. Yeah. And I was like, dude, that is amazing. Um, I usually mm. don't get kits or anything, but this is one I would love to get. Hopefully, X Plus one day can do like a favorite sculptor's line of this because that would be so, so amazing. It's so, it's, I love that it's so unique and it's also very dynamic. I love the fact that he's like tightening his headband, dude. It's mm -hmm. just so like it's just so interesting, you know, because it could easily just be him standing still, wearing the suit, whatever, you know, halfway out of the suit. But it's just very dynamic, and and the way that his like clothes are folded and the expression, it looks great. Um, and here is a video of it that I wanted to share too. Hey, wasn't there a little short uh, for like one of the Godzilla's anniversaries of uh, the 54 suit and they showed like someone getting out, like tying the, the headband or am I just imagining? I feel that? like that was a commercial. Yeah. Yeah. Commercial. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about though, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yep. Yeah. This thing is so cool though. It looks pretty big too. That's a tissue box. So. Uh, it's got to be like 30 centimeter scale. Um, and last thing I was going to share, um, Tetsuku, you, you know, you can love or hate what Tetsuku does. He's got a very unique style. He's His stuff is very uh, clunky is the best way I can describe his sculpts. Um, I'm not a big fan of, of a lot of his stuff. I've owned some of his uh or one of his kits before and i ended up selling it after i built it i'm not the biggest fan just because of how he actually sculpts his work but he did a 91 uh and i believe this is like in the 35 centimeter scale just he's had some enough. like really yeah he's had some really popular uh kits that he's done um so this is the same guy that did the 50 centimeter 84 uh that i'm sure that we've all seen on facebook from marcellus because he's painted like 10 of them um so oh. he did that one the yep. uh x plus that just got released like that sculpt no 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 it's no not the cybot no it's a 50 uh centimeter he did a 50 centimeter uh 84. um oh. he also uh helmy has these right the 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 tissue holder the Godzilla tissue holder, toilet paper holder, whatever it is. They have like mm -hmm. the 95 and a few other things. He sculpted those two. But okay. uh, but yeah, it, love, love it or hate it, this guy puts out work. He's also doing a minus one uh, with a train in its mouth. And uh, that's something else I probably should have shared. I might be able to just find it because Ibaraki is also doing one with KOC. So he has um, a... I, since I... The uh, tail okay. positioning on that figure is unique. <laughs> yep. Yeah, and and Ibaraki of KOC is doing a minus one bust, by the way. Ooh. That's cool. So these pictures are are pretty shitty, but um, he's also considering uh, reissuing the 62 40 centimeter due to the popularity of the 64 reissue. Um, he is saying that uh, the actual production of it is going to be different i'm thinking what he's the translation is always difficult but i'm thinking he's implying that if he reissues it it's going to be a solid piece it's not going to be a kit um and you know people don't really understand what he means when he's describing it but yeah so ibaraki doing a minus one really cool these pictures i don't know why he goes with this filter but it probably looks a lot better without the filter cool but yeah all right, help me. And what you got? I only got one item, right? Uh, it's not one item. I don't know. Next to it. Next to it. Next to it. Next. To it, next. 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 To the right. To the right. To the right again. <laughs> oh. One more. Yeah, that's the one. All right. So, uh, I like to buy home goods from my home. Uh, to make it more Godzilla centric. I I think you guys know I have Godzilla tissue boxes. I have Godzilla toilet paper. I have Godzilla uh, feet, uh, slippers, and all that. So another thing I found was this Godzilla buddy where you put it at your desk, right? So you see that thing that that long that sounds wrong. Um, that the thing that he's holding onto that's long supposed to be thing. your uh, 
to be where you rest your arms on. So basically, you will have that Godzilla over here, and then you will rest your arms on the table on that cushion. So he's your desk buddy, and I I quite like it. He's big. He's really big. Uh, and hopefully you can track it down. They used to have it at a Godzilla store, but you might be able to find it on Yahoo or auctions and all that. But I think I might get it eventually. If I can track one down, I might get it. It'd be nice to have a Godzilla desk buddy while you do work. So that's my uh, item, unique item I found when it comes to home goods. Now, so, hold on a minute, help me. Yeah. Do you have yes. the Mecha Godzilla wrench? It was sold out. It was sold out. <laughs> Uh, I was so bummed. I really want to get it. So, you know, hopefully if I go, maybe they have it in store at the Godzilla store because I'm going next week. If they have it at the Godzilla store next week, I am so picking it up. And if anyone is in Japan next week, please let me know. It will be cool to uh, to hook up. Whoa, Thomas is in the chat, dude. Thomas, what's up, Thomas? Thanks for joining us. Yeah, uh, Cool. Next up, we have... Um, Ah, review. We are finding the review section, the section that I'm so afraid for because everyone pretty much essentially on this panel is going to rag on the movie we're going to talk about. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, Godzilla 2019, King of the Monsters. Um, so I think I should go last because I will provide some balance, hopefully. But uh, let's start with the review. Uh, please try to be as objective as you can, but here we go. I'm scared to listen to this. All right, let's go, Greg. Bring it on. All righty. So, um, as I said at the beginning of this, this is my favorite Godzilla. No, it's not. I despise this film. <laughs> I loathe this film. <laughs> this movie uh, dropped on my wedding day um, five years ago. And uh, I'm really glad I didn't go to the theater on opening day because that would have put a pole over my wedding. So, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think my wife would have been too pleased about that either. But all right, I will try to be as objective as I can. I went into this film with really, really, really high hopes. Um, the trailers had me pumped. I thought it was going to be a vast improvement over 2014. And what I got was a disjointed mess, just chock full of misguided member berries that really didn't mean anything to me other than to anger me. Um, the overall plot line i'm not a huge fan of I, I think the actors there's a really good cast in this film vera farmiga is normally a fantastic actress charles dance is fantastic and everything is he's in including this he is one of the better uh aspects of this film um but he's really underutilized and um they don't really explain him very well um i, I wrote down some notes let me see that the actors um uh, Ken Watanabe, Sally Hawkins, they're very, they're really good actors. Um, the Bear McCreary score is fantastic. I cannot believe they haven't brought him back for more scores. Um, and as it relates to member berries, the McCreary score, I would say more or less has homages in it to the classic Mothra themes, um, the classic Ifigube themes. Um, so the score is really, really good. Um, at the outset of this podcast, I said that Rodan is my favorite kaiju. The Rodan scene, uh, the emergence from the volcano, is the best scene in the film, uh, hands down, both in terms of its execution, special effects, and just overall wow factor. Um, I really do not like how they handled Rodan at the end of the film, where he gives a little curtsy to Godzilla, um, as well as him being taken out by just like a sting to the shoulder. Um, Rodan was far tougher in the Showa era. Um, he might not have ever been Godzilla's equal, but you can't tell him that. He he would always put up a fight. He would never bow to Godzilla. Um, Why would the, monsters even bow in the first place? Like right. it, it makes no fucking sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Anyways, <laughs> I I'm not a fan of the Ghidorah design or the Mothra design. I'm always worried about what America would do with Mothra, and uh, 2019 showed me exactly what I was worried about. Uh, Ghidorah, I think, is a good dragon design, but I feel it loses a lot of the personality of the Showa Ghidorah or even the 91 Ghidorah or the GMK Ghidorah, for that matter. Or my favorite Ghidorah, Grand King Ghidorah. What a fabulous design that was. Um, yeah, they made him brown also. I mean, I, I jokingly call him the, the big brown dragon. Um, I like his wings. I like the wingspan. And um, I don't know. Uh, a lot of the action scenes are obscured by a lot of debris and snow and 
like cinders and fire and um my biggest issue with the film though is is its overall treatment of nuclear energy and i, I think it's downright perverted the what they did with sarazawa and his sacrifice because in the original film sarazawa sacrifices himself for the very purpose of preventing nuclear proliferation and monsters like godzilla whereas this film he uses a nuke to bring godzilla back to life and i'm like oh gross um so i just i really didn't like that um the sudden appearance of the oxygen destroyer just out of nowhere i mean i i don't know i think the oxygen destroyer is a powerful enough um story idea to carry a film uh, oh wait wait it it carried two films that's that's right there's already been two films entirely about the oxygen destroyer um so just throwing that in for a member berry moment was so unearned and undeserved and underwhelming um yeah it's it's tough for me i really don't like this film uh and as i said i really do like vera farmiga as an actress i cannot stand her character she has got to be responsible for a death toll in the hundreds of millions. But, you know, they're saving the planet with their radiation. So I might have some more thoughts on it, but I want to kick it over to my friend Devin, who echoes a lot of my sentiments. Yeah, Greg uh, pretty much has covered like a lot of my thoughts on this movie, too. I will bring up one more thing, though. Um, you know, they just used Burning Godzilla out of nowhere. It's just kind of like a completely unearned. Sarah's you always got nine, that lizard juiced. You have 95, which is, you know, a whole movie in itself, a whole storyline about how, you know, you had the climactic ending of Godzilla. It all led up to this moment. And I think Burning Godzilla deserves to be treated right and not just in a movie for about like two minutes and then it's done with it it's like a complete waste because now if they ever want to do burning godzilla again it's kind of like well we already did that so i think we should probably just do something else so i don't think we'll ever see burning godzilla again in this monster verse which is unfortunate um but yeah like they, they use the oxygen destroyer as just like oh hey this is something that's in godzilla here you go just put it in the movie uh it's so good isn't it like oh my god it's got burning godzilla oxygen destroyer this is the best movie ever what but <laughs> no like you can't just do that like <sighs> another thing greg didn't mention was um a lot of people had complaints about 2014 not being able to see Godzilla in the movie. Um, well, he just wasn't in the movie as much, but when he was on screen, you could see him. With this movie, they cover everything with like fog and rain and smoke, and you, you never get a good, clear picture of, of anything. Like if you're seeing Godzilla, it's zoomed in, you can never see his whole body, or King Ghidorah, you can never like really see his whole body except for that one shot with the cross in the background and it's just everything is just so muddy like when i think back on this movie i don't have any clear picture of like any of the monsters besides rodan and maybe mothra when when uh when she's a larva um but yeah like even even mothra's emergence scene when she finally comes out of the cocoon she's fucking covered in rain in a in a waterfall like we can't get a clear shot of that come on like can can anything be clear in this movie and also maybe daytime no <laughs> uh that's my main gripes i'm sure we're going to talk about a lot more and uh, argue and stuff so i'll just i'll pass over to uh anesthesia yeah uh, so uh, i uh, yep so just before that uh do we want to see this course at the end of your review or when everyone's done we'll do um, it when everyone's done when everyone's done yeah all right cool cool, cool. So I'm probably the devil's advocate here, and I like the movie. I think it's a fun popcorn movie. It's not to be taken too seriously. Um, I think cultural impact-wise, you go and ask anyone on the street who is not exposed to Godzilla as much as we are what their idea of Godzilla is. They're probably going to say 2014, 2019, or 1998. And I'd say more nowadays, it is the 2019 Godzilla. It's... I wouldn't have started watching Godzilla if not for that movie. I think that the designs are fantastic. 
The only thing I dislike a little bit is the plot lines. Some of the characters are a bit, they go on a little bit and I do not like the Mothra design. I can agree with that. It's the most forgettable design. Until I saw the Spiral Studios figure recently, I'd completely forgotten what she looked like even. Outside that, yeah. I think that the designs are fantastic. The special effects are something that are just amazing to see on the big screen. And yep, I like the movie. I will sit here and I will proudly say that I do. I do agree with your points. Like, it definitely does have that culture, cultural impact, but it's just kind of like, I wish, you know, the modern, you know, uh, audience got a better movie out of it but you know it definitely did have that impact and like you i do like the designs too i don't really have a problem especially rodan rodan is awesome rodan's a good design i, I i'll back that up i think at the end of the day one of the big things is the movies aren't really made for us they're made for the general public um and they're made to be as palatable as possible so and at yeah. the end of the day it's worked it's got plenty of people into the franchise and watch the older movies definitely yeah we're still getting more movies so that is that is a positive you can give to it and i'll be very happy to watch them all will not support king kong but i will watch <laughs> it still <laughs> Let. Like, what's the Charles. wait hold on hold on a minute what's the beef with king kong what's going on i don't on like there? he's just a boring stinky <laughs> huge monkey and they could have picked any kaiju to focus on right and he like destroy it something cool but they picked king kong the big stinky monkey yeah that's, because that's he's my popular in yeah, america he's <laughs> have you seen because he's seen, popular like, in america king kong i'm just curious 2005 king kong what peter what jackson, peter jackson what was yeah peter jackson's one uh, not in like 15 years, but yeah. I'm not just, a huge fan movie, of that movie. That movie really made me like King Kong. Like at, at first he, I was kind of like you, like I don't like him, but when you can really sympathize with him and like, un, like get him just, as I a don't character, feel like he, I like him. He fits. I don't feel like he fits, you know, like as a standalone King Kong, sure. But it's just, yeah. why doesn't Godzilla just blast his head off? I, d I don't understand that. <laughs> He tried. Uh, <laughs> Charles, Nick. Yeah, yeah. Oh um, god, here we go. <laughs> look, I. All right, let me explain my uh, my viewing experience of 2019. So I uh, downloaded it on my phone through HBO Max. Oh. I could watch it offline on my flight on your phone. to uh, to to Philadelphia, and uh, you know I. I already am not a fan of this film, but I was like, I have really terrible flight anxiety. Maybe this will help. Um, I fell asleep. First time ever I've ever fallen asleep on a plane because I have really bad anxiety. But putting that movie on, a little bit of alcohol, and I was I was out like a light. So I had to like go back, <laughs> rewatch certain scenes. Um, I tried to watch it this time objectively and just treat it as a film rather than as something Godzilla related and it was even worse uh, <laughs> okay okay there's a couple just a couple things I want to point out all right I was just watching it just like just from a critical point of view just like as a film um you remember when they're all like you know arguing like did Emma do it did Emma not do it and uh and then they're like we're getting a call and they pull up on the screen and it's Emma and it's when she like confesses what she's doing. <laughs> All right. There's something wrong with this scene. Okay. So she's like saying, you know, yes, it was me. You're right. And I'm and resetting the natural and, balance. And... It's her Bro, what dialogue. I don't under, no, listen, <laughs> listen, this is what killed me. I, I actually rewinded it to see like why this was this bitch had a full slideshow ready to go for this, for this one call. <laughs> Because she's talking about the monster and she's like showing pictures of the Muto from the previous films and all this other stuff on a Skype call. And it's like, it's like, was she really this prepared? And she's like, look at, look at uh, San Francisco or Las Vegas, whatever, after the attack. And it's like, you see the, the plants on the, on the buildings and shit. I'm like. I'm like, is she really, is she really like I, make this whole presentation for this call to confess? Hang on. 
hang on she did actually do that i don't know if you noticed this i, I was re-watching that scene and something happened she was looking down at essentially a script so i think she did prepare for this call she really wanted to give a presentation she looked down a few times i saw her looking down so, so okay. she, she had been watching a lot of anime and just wanted that villain moment <laughs> where she just explains everything she's about to do <laughs> it's 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 so corny though though okay let's be let's be completely honest with ourselves here instead of like uh shooting up copium let's be completely <laughs> honest here the reason that they had all those screen or that all those like slideshow presentations and shit for the speech is because audiences were treated like they're stupid and they wouldn't understand unless they were shown what she's talking about let's be completely honest that's why you can say, oh, well, she planned it off screen, and I'm going to explain exactly why she did it, even though there's no evidence of what I'm saying. No, they did that because audiences are, are treated as if they're dumb, and I hate movies where they treat audiences like they're stupid. She and also... Another thing... Oh, sorry. I, I just... Sorry to interrupt. I uh, I forgot to say this in my initial spot po or review as well, is... She gets a very unearned kind of semi-redemption arc at the very last, like, 10 minutes of the movie. And I'm just like, this bitch killed 100 million people or more. She deserves death. She deserves to fucking get murdered by Ghidorah. And, like, they, they really tried to, like, make you feel sympathy for her. And I felt none. Yeah. Okay. So, so all right. Chris, Christopher and I debate all the time, and I'm I'm about to bring out a smoke show here. So you're saying that you're saying that the target audience is kids in America who are generally dumb, and that's why they need to show you what she's talking about. Um, you remember uh, in the Lion King when they're like talking when when uh, Simba is an adult and he meets up with I can't even remember her name Nala, like comes back, you know, and Nala. yeah, and you got the whole Elton John shit going on, you know, in the. <laughs> anyways yeah anyways uh she's talking about scar taking over right and she's like they're starving all the blah blah, blah. like the the pride ones are you know falling apart did they have to show that i don't remember them showing that they didn't show that that movie's for kids it's a cartoon and i'm so, gonna take they, gonna like, take 30 kids to the movie next week they're they're smarter yeah. than getting credit for yeah i'm just i'm just saying like it, it it's treating the audience like they're stupid and i hate films that do that another thing that bugged me that i had to go back again so they're like tracking godzilla right and uh and then they say that they lose him around venezuela that you know they they lose the 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 uh the trace of him and that's where he's like i'm telling you man it's the hollow earth thing that's how he moves around zipping along or whatever okay so so that's what they say and then Right before that scene, we had we had Jonas or whatever, uh, Scar and the Hyenas about to take over the Pride Land. That's not what I'm talking about. That's way before. That's way. That's that's like before he even. All right, all right. That's gentlemen, before he even betrays Simba. Gentlemen, we can sorry, review the Lion Simba. King next week. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. Completely unrelated sequence. Rewatch the Lion King, bros. It's so good. Uh, anyways, no. So, so they they say they lose him over Venezuela, right? The scene right before that, they were showing uh, Tywin Lannister and um, and Lorraine Warren uh, were like <laughs> in, in Antarctica and they were setting all of the charges, right? And so they're doing that, right? And then it goes to uh, to them like losing trace of Godzilla uh, near Venezuela. And then the next scene, okay is them like saying it transitions and they're like all right we're coming up on uh we're coming up on the base so if you really like pay attention to the timing here the time that it takes them to get from where they are when they're like flying around in venezuela or whatever all the way to antarctica it's like 20 minutes <laughs> if you if you watch the movie and you actually look at like the time because they're still planning charges by the time that that chandler and and you know crew shows up so it's like it took them like 20 minutes to get from Venezuela to Antarctica. I want to say okay. something real so quick. It's like, I, I think I think we can forgive like the stupid crap in the movie because, you know, I really like GVK. There's a lot of stupid stuff in there, but they at mm -hmm. least made GVK enjoyable. Whereas this movie, it's just kind of not so much. It's kind of just boring. You know, like can we I, I, I also, on that? 
Yes, I also uh, Anastasia I don't doesn't like... think it's boring, and Helmy is a he's gonna <laughs> jump in in a second here too. So. Well, I'm just kind of talking to Charles here because he's uh, taking all the like stupid yeah. little. I know, I know. Hey, hey, they stuff. have a fucking giant stealth bomber that can fly at Mach 12. Okay, let's just you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I also think that this story is uh, is terrible um, because it, it's telling you. You know that this lady's committing genocide, and and by the end of it, you're supposed to feel sorry for her. Yeah, so and also I the do, story I revolves do, yeah. around her and not Godzilla. It's kind of like, yeah, and it's like <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't as a character, Madison. yeah, I'm just kind of like, I don't know, I don't know, man. I, you know, Millie Bobby Brown does her best impression of being in a 2000s emo music video for half the film. Um, I just. I don't know like I, my my overall opinion of the film is that I'm I'm very happy that it happened. I'm very happy that it's here and if I was a kid I would absolutely enjoy it. But just looking at it objectively like we were supposed to do hell me I think that it's <laughs> terrible. Just objectively as a film it's really bad and like everyone has said as well the action scenes are so dark. I mean, I understood in 1998 when they did a lot of stuff in the dark because CGI wasn't that good. But this yeah, is but 2019, even 98, and you still you can't really, see shit. Yeah, 98, you really yeah. get clear shots of Godzilla all the time. Like, okay, so we'll go back even more. It's seeing yeah, Godzilla it's, in that movie. I can bring up those scenes in my head. You know, I would understand if it was 93 when Jurassic Park came out and a lot of stuff is in the dark. But that's even worse, actually, because now we're in 2019 or for this movie, and it's like everything's in the dark. Um, as far as designs, uh, Rodan, obviously, I think that's unanimous. The Rodan design's really cool. Uh, pop the ball, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, no, so the Rodan design is really cool. Um, Mothra. It's a big bug. Not for me. Not for me. Um, I don't like. I don't like the Ghidorah design. I, I really don't. I, I'm not a big fan of Ghidorah in general, which people will hate me for saying that. But I'm. I, I just Ghidorah's always gotten her or his. I think her or whatever. Their, their ass kicked in like every movie growing up that I would watch. I, I mean, Destroy All Monsters is one of my first favorites, and he gets his ass handed to him. He gets like jumped. So, like, I just never, when Ghidorah came on screen, I never really felt like, oh, shit. And then I don't like how they made, I will say, the one thing I really like in 2019 about Ghidorah is when the tail first comes out of the ice and it's like a rattlesnake. It's like, tss, 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 tss. that's kind of cool. That was cool. I, that was I pretty think Ghidorah's cool. emergence from the ice was damn good. Yeah. I thought that that was, was really cool. It was it was really well oh, done. Really let well. me say one thing. Him, I him like vaporizing they, people with gravity beams was fucking cool too. They mm -hmm. one thing I really liked is they finally got Blue Oyster Cult like in the Godzillas in the Godzilla movies. I was yeah. like so happy about that. <laughs> that was cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. But no, I mean, you know, I, I don't. Oh yeah, no, lots of lots of forced humor in that movie that didn't make me laugh at all. Um. Yeah, lots of stuff that's just kind of cringe. What what was it that I said in the chat that I thought was so cringe? Um, when they're the talking bowing. about Rodan and he's either here to fight or, you know. Something like that. Yeah, I can't even remember. It was some stupid. Oh, no, no. It was the, when they censored the, the Mutos. And I was just like, it's like, yeah, this is actually really cringe. Uh, but I don't know. It's just like. I feel like the uh, a lot of the writing in 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 2019 is like legendary wanted to attempt a MCU feel for a Absolutely. lot of it, and I just did not did not like it. I don't like the MCU, so I'm just a Debbie Downer. Was that um, was that Bradley Whitford, the scientist guy? He's he and another. That's the thing is like there's a lot of decent to really good actors in this, and I just feel like they're given the shittiest lines of dialogue ever. But he's his entire purpose was to just like spit out one liners in the film. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, oh, oh, last thing I'll say, I, I agree with the whole nuclear bomb thing. I, I feel like um, if you're making something that's a remake or a continuation of a beloved series, there should always be respect. 
um, put into the the practice of like what you're producing. And I do feel like um, it was kind of insulting uh, how they turned radioactivity and and nuclear power into something positive. It's like literally the complete opposite of what what it's always been thematically. You know, regardless of if if Japan is a big nuclear power, I don't care. The original point of Godzilla is a warning, you know, and the fact that they're turning it into a superpower now and radiation can create life now and like make things better. It's just kind of fucked up, man. Just like being straight up and meanwhile, uh, nobody can fucking live in Chernobyl and Fukushima for like the next several decades, if not centuries. Legalized nuclear bombs. Sorry, mm-hmm. Charles, that was the first F bomb. The what? What? The first F bomb. No, no there's more been and we more. go R rated. There's been more. It's been like three or four. No, no. Yeah, it's been like three or four. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh oh, oh, okay. Very very last thing. Very last thing, and then then I'll stop ranting. Uh I I hate I I really do hate what 2014 and what 2019 did with Ken Watanabe. Ken Watanabe is one of the greatest like Japanese actors to ever do, uh, you know, big budget American films. And he's literally uh, been reduced in these films to just looking around like the whole time. That's all that he does. He says a line and then he's like, he just looks around the room. He's got no, no room to, to really like, you know, show his talents. And I don't know. That just always kind of, yeah. I wish they had an actor to like actually carry out through all the movies, you know, and have some continuity. Like, I guess they tried with Millie Bobby Brown, but that's just, nah. The, I, again, the, the cast in 2019 is stellar. It's a really I mean, good cast. 2014 just... was great too. They had Brian Cranston, and they, you know, what happened there. But anyways, let's let yeah. Helmy go. Helmy, <laughs> give us some love. Finally, I'm gonna give so much love to this movie. I uh, hope you guys can hear me <laughs> clearly now. Because I'm gonna go into it. All right. So first, I got a long list here. So uh, bear that in mind. First thing, I love the opening sequence because, like, you know, you immediately see the aftermath of 2014, and you immediately can tell that someone died. Like people died because of Godzilla. Because in 2014, he made it seem as if like, oh, Godzilla's the hero. He's gonna protect everyone. But that's not the case. When kaiju fight, you know, people are gonna die. And you see that in 2019. So I was like, I was, I really like that really cool opening scene. And to see Godzilla just immediately come up uh, from the get go, that was awesome. And then um, I think they laid down the exposition really well, really quickly. I really, I cannot stand exposition where, you know, you have text and someone explaining what's happening and stuff like that. You didn't see that in 2019. It was immediately, you could tell from the uh, short scenes that, you know, what's happening and what's going on. And one of the ways they did that was a court hearing. I appreciated that they did a court hearing session to give exposition as opposed to an explanation. I hate it when they do explanations. And um, uh, for me, the the part where the lady was trying to, uh, when the guy was saying, oh, we need to blur the the censorship part, right? Uh, I think for me, it's, it's forced humor one. At the same time, it's also, it feels like uh, a reflection of how we need to censor everything nowadays. And I can't stand it. We, uh, you know, there's trigger warnings. I'm sorry if anyone is triggered by this, but trigger. there's trigger warnings for everything. And I'm like, come on. Sometimes you're like, uh, you, you see a trigger warning and you like, you open it. And I'm like, uh, yeah, this is nothing. You know, like I've, I've, I've had worse cuts on my body or something like that. So nah. Uh, so I think it's a reflection of that. And, but yeah, I get the point of it being forced humor. And then after that, let me see. Um, and then I, I like the bit where they say, oh, uh, atomic testing. They didn't mention that atomic testing was bad. It awoke all the kaiju. And then that's the price we have to pay. We awoke the kaiju because we use atomic testing, right? The nuclear bomb testing and stuff like that. And so it's not necessarily nuclear is bad or good, but what you do with it. So for me, I didn't mind that they use nuclear for good because it's a tool. It can be bad or good. That's how I see it. Uh, and then I felt the whole movie was very fast-paced, like one point to another and, and all that stuff. I really liked it. Um, Tell me, can I jump in real quick? Go for it. Because with my notes, I just I literally took quotes from the film. Dr. Emma yeah. Russell, unless we restore balance, just like a forest fire replenishes 
uh, what, blah, 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 blah. Wherever the Titans go, life follows triggered by their radiation. Just saying. Yeah. Yeah. That, that doesn't invalidate anything I say, though. Uh, and then, uh, the implication is that it's a good thing and that she she gets redeemed in the like in the end credits and stuff but they're like showing all the cities with like plants and life well to, to Helmy's, that's true but to Helmy's point like she is the villain you know of course she, she is but that's that. also why i hate it too because literally the movie proves her right through the yeah whatever go ahead Helmy. Uh, i see what you're saying all right and another thing is uh the sets are amazing like i don't need you guys look i look at all the sets they really went all out they didn't cheapen out and stuff like that like uh the the, the interior of the ships and all that stuff the suit everything was point you know like really really good uh another thing that we've not seen in a godzilla movie or at least that i can recall is godzilla showing showcasing his lights as a warning remember that scene where he's you know that that trying to intimidate the people i was like oh that, i thought that was really cool we've never really seen that before and i really really like that um and some we'll of jump the in real fast one more time help me on that note i'll give yeah. you a pro i'll give you a pro there was really yeah. good foreshadowing because after that scene they said um it's like a gorilla pounding his chest and i was like ah that's good that's good foreshadowing right there yeah. i didn't pick up on that <laughs> and i and that's i thought cool. there were a few framing sequences uh the director of photography i think some of the sequences were amazing like for example uh there's this one uh zoom out shot and it was the final battle between godzilla and king Ghidorah. you could see like them charging each other i really like that scene another scene is obviously Ghidorah with the cross uh trying to symbolize that he's an antichrist and all that stuff uh and uh the rodan sequence dude like just the framing of the rodan sequence perfection and i really like how evil and massive Ghidorah felt when he was introduced because I watched it with my nephew. He was scared. He was like closing his eyes because he was he looked he took up so much of the screen. So I really liked that. And then um, another thing, I felt like the whole movie was very kinetic. It was very uh, the tension for me was built perfectly. There was so much tension. I was at the edge of my seat for a lot of the sequences, like the Rodin sequences. Oh, it, my favorite sequence of tension was when uh they were on the plane and they say okay 30 seconds to king Ghidorah or monster zero 20 seconds to uh, monster zero you could see rodan closing in and all that stuff i love that um uh, one of the things that cracked me up and this was maybe unintended you know how um they were on the plane trying to get onto the, uh, what the, the air bomber i can't remember what you call that ship uh this special ship that they're stealth on bomber? Um, yeah. stealth bomber they were trying to get the helicopter into the stealth bomber um and uh ice cube's son was like calling in and you could see his picture pop up and he was like had this grimace that why would you have a grimace <laughs> in that pop up photo? i thought it was hilarious i love that right um like 50 cent like the face he does is that what you're talking about yeah 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 it's yeah. funny and, then, and um i like that uh here's the thing right and i like the fact that here for me i saw the oxygen destroyer being yeah i, I when I first saw it, I got excited. I was like, oh my God, oh, there's a bomb. That's, I know that that's from the movies. That's from the old movies, right? But the reason I didn't have any, really an issue with the uh, Oxygen Destroyer was because I know they needed a new weapon because they already tried nuclear on uh, Godzilla before. Godzilla didn't die. So they needed, they didn't, needed something new, right? And I, I kind of, I would have liked it more that the fact that they use Oxygen Destroyer as opposed to some new technology that we've never heard before. I, I much prefer a callback than something new that I've never heard before. And it's then just, I love could, that, like, it's just so out of the blue just... and it's such so short. If they, if you're going to use something yeah. that's that impactful to the Godzilla series, you need to actually incorporate that as a major element of the plot. I feel like they could have just wrote something different to where they weren't trying to kill Godzilla because by the end they're helping Godzilla. So maybe they could have just started helping him sooner, you know? Black I, hole. I think, black hole. Uh, yeah, I, I, the black Legend hole. Thing, um, I think that was pushing the realms of believing, you know, you can't really believe that too much. I think it would be a bit too much. But uh, I like what the about scene, They but... could have done uh, cadmium, right? They could have done yes. cadmium. I love cadmium. They could have right. done that. It's my review, damn it. Let me. <laughs> 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 All right. I'm so, interested. The next thing. All right. Yeah, so next thing I liked was uh, when the oxygen destroyer was, you know, deployed and all that stuff. I really loved the fact that all the fish was coming up. You know, all the dead fish was coming up. I was like, oh, that's a nice callback scene. 
Um, and the reason I feel like for me, uh, oh, one of the scenes, one of the lines that I really liked is when um, uh, the guy from West Wing, he really said, uh, if someone said, oh my God. And then the guy from West Wing was like, Zilla. I just like that line. I don't know why. It just tickled me. Um, and I, I really liked how King Ghidorah picked up Godzilla and then he just threw him down to the ground. I said, like, whoa, that's such a nice visual, you know, where it was um, burning up and stuff like that and crashed onto the ground. I loved it. Uh, let me see what else. Well, uh, he, dropped him and... he dropped him yeah. in the water, right? Or am I remembering that wrong? Nah. No, he yeah, dropped him in the middle of the city, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, the reason why for me, 2019, I really liked it, it was because it reminded me a lot of one of my favorite movies which was uh it's going to come as a surprise but rocky because uh Ghidorah was destroying godzilla again and again right but uh, godzilla kept coming back up he kept he never uh, gave up but he kept dude and here's the thing right Ghidorah is really like messing um godzilla up. even with his power up he was still losing right he needed mothra's help and i just love mothra's uh um you know, uh, sacrifice and all that. I, I just loved it. And the visuals and all that, for me, it was okay. However, I do admit that if you had, if your screen wasn't big enough, if your screen was a bit older, it wasn't as bright, you, there's a lot of sequences you can't see. Thankfully for me, I could see all the sequences, but I mean, there's not, not everyone's going to have a home theater to watch that in, you know, in the best way. I mean, so I'm you wouldn't recommend watching it on a phone? The movie. Like I could see it. It's just, I wish the shots were, clear as opposed yeah. to like muffled you know and covered by weather and smoke and all that stuff debris yeah um i i, I didn't mind it as much uh i think uh, i like the atmosphere of that and i i like the fact that Ghidorah essentially controls the weather I, I, that's something uh I, I don't think we've explored that before right like Ghidorah controlling weather so i thought that was fun I, I i love the fact there was more rain and stuff like that and it made sense to me because if uh Ghidorah wanted to control lightning and stuff like that uh, you need like i guess essentially rain clouds Ghidorah and all that. has so, Ghidorah uh, controls budget the CGI money budget. saving powers yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i mean it works right it, for me it works and then i kind of i, I kind of wish that we could hear more of the bitty, 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 bitty. we didn't we hit a tiny bit but it wasn't so clear i was like oh uh, i kind of yeah. miss that that, so, uh, that weather controlling aspect, though, that's also where, like, I infer he kills so many more people than it, what is actually shown. And what's shown is a massive amount of destruction. So, again, I'm just like, holy fuck, did Ghidorah just, like, wipe out a fifth of the world's population? Uh, by the way, I agree with uh, Kiryu. I would love to see more Dorats. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so, uh, for me, I... Uh, I, I love okay here's the thing right with the designs i have to agree I, to be honest i was very worried i thought they were going to give us 98 uh you know like design or you know how hollywood is whenever they they, they take uh an um an ip whenever they try to ho make it more hollywood it looks terrible right like i just hate the the design but for me i thought 2019 i was very worried because uh i i think you know mothra is going to suck Ghidorah is going to suck turns out they looked amazing, but they were not iconic. I agree with you. They were not iconic. You, when you look at them, they're like, they don't stand out as much as the originals, but as a modern design, I think they didn't mess it up. So I'm, I'm happy with that. It would have helped Mothra to like make the, the design more memorable if they kind of, sh if they showed it more like an angel, like in bright scenes where you could really see her like making her look like an angel you know but instead but, it's just all dark fucking rain and all this shit well, <laughs> no, but the, the waterfall scene was beautiful though i thought it was a really beautiful scene and the, the i mean the only light in the scene is coming from mothra you know it's yeah just kinda... like... um one thing about the designs real quick and i'm sorry to keep jumping in on you help me the other monsters skilla methuselah and all them they are so thoroughly unmemorable that not a single one of us brought them up in our reviews yeah so I agree. All the other designs were kind of, I mean, to be fair, they're kind of like fodder, right? So I'm, I'm not surprised. The only one that stuck out in my mind was the crab looking one. I kind of like that. Uh, but the rest were like very meh. Uh, and I, yeah, like I say, I, I didn't really mind it. So I think all in all, I think that's it for me. That was all my points. I went on and on. So 
you know, trying to bring some balance. I really enjoyed it. Uh, Wait, I think um, we, yeah. how do you feel about what we said about burning Godzilla? So here's the thing, right? So for me, uh, I can see why it was a waste. At the same time, for me, I really like the fact that it was kind of like Rocky. He needed that power up. And when you watch anime and stuff like that, you will go through a series of power ups, right? So I was like, and when uh, when I saw that power up, I liked it. It's worse yeah. in the anime trilogy because he just like turns it on. I mean, it is cool to see it on screen. It's just kind of like I wish they paid it more respect. Is all. Yeah. yeah. Star ratings, but. Yeah, I just I just want to say one last thing, and because of that, uh, the reason I didn't mind it or still liked it was because it just showcased that, dude, Ghidorah was a badass. He was destroying Godzilla, even with Burning G. You need a Burning G, and even then, yeah. So I liked it. All right. Anyways, uh, yeah, uh, stars. Are we are we gonna do it? Here's the thing. Moving forward, we have we have to be consistent, right? Are we gonna do out of ten or out of five stars? What, what are we talking here? Ten, 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 ten. 10, 10, 10, 10. How about yeah, 10? 10. 16 stars? 10 or 16. percentage scale? I think 10's good. 10. Uh, Anastasia, what do you think? 10. 7.5. Oh, okay. She's giving the score all over. Okay. She's giving, okay. But yeah, let's, let's no, go. We're, no, we're doing, we're doing out of 7.5 stars, homie. Come on. Oh. <laughs> I no, thought no, you no. meant the score out of 10. No, 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 no. no you're right. Okay. You're right. He's just fucking with right. you. All right, so Greg, what's what's your score? Oh God, oh God. Three. <laughs> oh my God. I'm not gonna go as low as Greg. Um, you know, it is a Godzilla movie. At the end of the day, one I don't watch very much, but I'm, I'll have to give it like a five point five or six. Make up your mind. I'm, fi I'm figuring out an average. Five point five or six. Six. Uh, we'll do five point five. All right. Ah! <laughs> That was on purpose. I don't care. I'm taking down it as a six. It's right? an F uh, plus from Devin. <laughs> it has right, Godzilla so, uh, in it, so a little leeway. Anastasia <laughs> gave it a 7.5. Uh, all right, Charles, what were we thinking? What were we thinking? Um, I say a five, man. I'd probably give it right, right smack dab in the middle. I give it a five. Um, you know, it's like if it wasn't a Godzilla film, I'd probably give it like a two. But since it's a Godzilla film, I I give it a five. Oh, yeah, is... it's not unwatchable. You know, it's not like to that point. Yeah, it's just middle middle of the pack, man. It's like. You but know. like you, I never really fall asleep or take naps. And the last time I watched this, I did uh, fall asleep and end up taking a nap, which is funny. Tell me, <laughs> give it some love. All right, so uh, another thing I failed to mention was the music. The music was outstanding. I love the music. Yes. I, Agreed. I have it can, repeat all the time. Uh, it, yeah, it was probably the best in all of the legendary uh, movies Easily. so far. I don't know yeah. why they haven't brought him back. It's crazy. I really like yeah. the score from 2014, though. That you know, the opening yeah. uh, soundtrack that they use. I really like that. Hmm. It's not all the right, original so theme, me, but I liked it. I, I don't know. Know. I feel like the I feel like the 2014 and, and 2021 scores are just a bit too blaring and loud for my taste. Um I do like the 2019 the most. Barry McCreary, been following him since Battlestar Galactica. And he did yes. The Walking Dead. Uh dude's amazing. Um but yeah, I mean I I'd put minus one over all of them, but we're not talking about minus one. Oh, now Iki Sato, oh my god. <laughs> all right. So uh, I'm gonna give it an 8.5. <laughs> Damn, that's high praise. Tell me, I, I wish I, I could. I, I wish I could see this movie through your eyes. Honestly, I do. Kind of jealous of Seriously. you that you do like it. <laughs> okay, so we average uh, it out I, to a 5.9. So we will just bump that up. We'll say uh, as, as an average, it's a six. Six. Yeah. I think I that's that. fair. Honestly, I think that's. Yeah. I think that's actually. Isn't that what it has on IMDb? It's yeah, got a, it's uh, yeah, this is six. It's a six point oh. Woo! Six point oh, and I. We are aligned with what's the, the masses. What's the rotten? What's the rotten tomatoes? Oh God, thirty <laughs> plus, forty plus. Okay. It's see. low. I remember uh, that. Yeah, it's got a forty-eight on Metascore. Um, mm -hmm. let's see. I'm pulling it up now. Godzilla. 
Um, While you're pulling that up, one last thing too. People forget this. It was, it it, it broke even. It wasn't really a hit. The only yeah. reason that Godzilla mm -hmm. and Kong got greenlit was it was already in production, and yeah. Godzilla and Kong was a certifiable hit. It was like the first like movie back from COVID where it blew mm -hmm. the fucking roof off. But you know, what a and, great time. Yeah, that was, I rented I was the so theater for that. Yeah, that movie. Nope. Yeah. On on Rotten Tomatoes, it's got a forty two percent critic score, and then uh, what's interesting is the audience score is eighty three percent. Okay. Little, mm. little yeah, I noticed there. in Facebook a lot of people really love this movie. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I think Charles, me, Charles, and Greg were in the minority on this one. When Majorly. It comes to Godzilla fans. Yeah. But. I'll stick to yeah, I, I I wish you guys could see the movie through my eyes. I was excited watching 2019. <laughs> I legit was excited, man. I was, oh, I, I was, I was really, excited going in. I was yeah, pissed I was off really coming excited out excited too. Um, I didn't want to go into it not liking it. I just remember I was so yeah. hyped. I was ready to see Godzilla after 2014. I was like, man, I can't wait to actually be able to see Godzilla and see him fight other monsters. It's gonna be awesome. But Rude. when I left the theater, I was just kind of like, that was the first time I left the Godzilla movie disappointed agreed wait can i yeah. ask, can i ask do you see any of the trailers beforehand i did i watched they I had the claire the, de lune trailer where they played the piano the claire de lune. i saw the teaser trailer and that was it like most movies i don't watch any trailers for like you guys but but godzilla i have to at least watch the teaser trailer because i just can't nah, wait. <laughs> I, 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 and, and this is the thing like i i avoid trailers because you build all these expectations in your head or you you imagine there's going to be this sequence or that sequence or an extended sequence and whenever that happens you always get let down so that's why i don't watch trailers I, at all i haven't watched it because normally trailers and stuff don't spoil anything for me even though they do show way too much um but dude with gxk that's coming out next week they they showed an entire fight you can watch one of the major fights on youtube right now and i'm like why the fuck would you do that like why are you yeah, posting they are the showing whole fight? a lot from this I'm, movie i'm when they I'm gonna showed... be sorry go ahead Devin. sorry go ahead when they showed the second trailer the one after the teaser i was watching i was like oh my god they're showing way too much i stopped watching it like halfway through i, I was gonna say that um a lot of studios if they think that the film is going to underperform, they'll do that because they want to like drive more interest and drive more like uh, viral stuff. So I'm really hoping that's not the case here. But um, typically speaking, Devin that, and that I have a date idea. next week. Yeah, I want to ask sure. really quick: Is this true that apparently there's 60 minutes of like monster action? That's what I've heard. That's the director saying that there's more monster ah. action in this movie than like all of the MonsterVerse films put together. If that's what? true, I, he said, if, if that is true, I think I'll love this movie because that means there's not much opportunity for human development and all that stuff, and it'll be really cheesy. He, and I, all we get is monster action. I can't remember if it's 12 or 20 minutes, but the director said there is a sequence that is like 12 or 20 minutes of just kaiju action, like straight. That's yeah. amazing. That's amazing. He, he's, yeah, he said. I thought he said there was like a 16 minute sequence. Where That's, that must be just it, yeah. kaiju. And, yeah, they're just interacting. It's like zero dialogue. It's just yeah, kaiju. It's just kaiju. So, I mean, that'll be fun. And, and Dev and I, we're going to have a great time next week. I hope you all have yeah, a dude. fun little thing planned for a new Godzilla movie coming out. And as much as I shit on the legendary films, number one, I, I am a school teacher and I take little kids to watch them and they get so pumped up. And like Helmy said, I was part of that generation that got bullied for liking Godzilla. And now that I'm like showing this to kids and they're excited about it, I, it tickles me pink. It tickles me pink right down to the dorsal fins. Nice. <laughs> uh, so now we are into the pod, uh, post pod discussions. So it was gonna be really no, short, no, no, no. But... Acquisitions. Don't, don't skip. Don't oh, skip. Yeah. I, got I, I got some goodies. I got some goodies, yeah, bro. Do that. Let's do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My bad, my bad. All right, let's do this. I've been okay. talking too much. Somebody right, so else with acquisitions. All right, I'll start, and then right. I guess we'll do Greg last. Uh, so these yeah. are two figures I never thought I would be able to get just because of how rare they've been. I haven't really seen many of them, but they just happen to magically pop up on Bai, the only listing I ever saw for them, and it's the uh, T-Base Hedora that glows oh, in the dark. Oh, I love it. 
Uh, this How figure, much was it? It, kind of, it was uh, $500. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's it was uh, expensive. But um, this figure, it looks just gray, but in person, the gray is actually uh, a glittery blue, which is really cool. And the eyes just look great. And it's glow in the dark. That's all I collect Fubi wise now. And then I also got the uh, GMK, which is also oh, has that glitterly blue. Uh, same price. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. I did just you get a rated. I did just get rated for the VA, and I got a big check. So I was like, I wasn't even gonna buy these, but that happened, and then I was like, all right, whatever. <laughs> But, that uh, GMK yeah. is stunning. That's that's yeah. a beautiful figure. Yeah, really happy with these. I got them. I instantly wanted to take pictures of them. Doesn't happen with a lot of figures for me, but these are really cool. So happy to add these to the collection. But yeah, that's it for me so far. All right, next person. Sorry, I should have showcased you. I was distracted. All right, so next person. Oh, okay. uh, I think Anastasia is going to grab her stuff, maybe. <laughs> Charles, oh, here, she comes. Yeah. here she comes. What I'm you got, exactly Anastasia? That. I, it is not technically Godzilla, but it looks like Godzilla. How cute is he? Oh! <laughs> is that uh, is that a Domo? Dog. It is a Squishmallow. That's cool. That's so is that a good. is that a Domo heart, Squishmallow? Godzilla. No, it's it's just like he's advertised as. What's his name? They usually have their names on it. Xander is his name. And he's a T-Rex, but he looks enough That's like Godzilla. Godzilla to get away with it. Of course, <laughs> I've got the actual, like, uh, which way is my camera? They're behind me. They're there. The actual mm -hmm. Godzilla Squishmallows. But this one was close enough to Godzilla Ooh. that I had to buy him because he just looks like him. Yeah, Aside that's like a that, Heisei one. <laughs> yeah. I've had no other acquisitions Ooh. because I spend all my money nowadays on my tattoos. Which are technically, are they kaiju? Maybe. Yeah. They're big dragons. Maybe. And my back tattoo definitely Maybe. is a kaiju. I do That's have awesome. Yamato no Orochi, the eight, no, the eight headed dragon on my back. So. That's cool. You got to take pictures of that. Big dragon bodysuit. Yeah, yeah, it's on my Instagram. I was just right, answering cool. Chris, sorry. Oh, yeah. Next. Who do we have? Who do we have? Child, Charles, do you have anything? I, I, I am in, I am in Philadelphia, so I don't have any of my collection. But, um, I recently a single seller has been posting incredibly rare Oyama kits, um, and he posted two of the same. It was a crane from Giver, because uh, Oyama did a Lisker and he did a crane, and uh, there were two separate listings, and I was taking zero chances. So I, I bid on both, and I actually won both. So I'm going two of that kit. Uh, and then there's a Devilman one that's ending tomorrow morning. So no, don't say anything! I, yeah. Just in case someone beats on it. Nah, they don't I'm need to get it now. I'm getting it now. Nah, dude, You're I will, done. I will murder you. <laughs> hey, don't don't doubt how deep my pockets can get when it comes to oh, Oklahoma. So, I haven't even Yama. seen Devilman. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, uh, but these are like really rare kits. The Oyama one, uh, it, the or the Devilman one went to like 250 within uh, the first hour that it was up. So I'm expecting that it's going to blow up tonight. Uh, but yeah, so I'm going to have uh, four Oyama kits coming in next month. Hell yeah. Nice, man. As Wyatt would call them, Obama kits. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Real. <Greg. laughs> No, Helmy, you gotta go. I'm going last. What? You've been I'm last? going last. All right, all right. All right, so um, Charles, can you show the, the, the two photos that I sent? Those were the figures that I got actually. The Kiryu and oh, the Prime God. One. Yes, please. Thank you. Unbelievable, Helmy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You were, you are a criminal. Okay. Let's see. So, yeah, here we go. So, these are the two items that are coming in. Uh, this guy is an 85 centimeter Kiryu from Human Studios. Uh, I paid way too much for shipping. Uh, I think I paid about $1,000 for shipping uh, from China to me. 
It comes in two boxes. Are you sharing the are you sharing the picture, Helmy? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, picture, yeah. the picture's up. Okay. It's up. Okay, okay. Yeah. So yeah, it's uh it comes in two massive boxes. Each box is like 45 kilograms. Uh, I'm sorry I don't have the uh, freedom measurements with me right now, but you can imagine it's really, really heavy. Uh, and it lights up and you can uh, switch out the hands and stuff like that to other weapons. So I'm really excited for this one. It should be coming up soon. This will be is my that, fourth. Sorry? Is that grayscale? I, did, I just don't see like color on it, really. Is there a color? Uh, I can't tell. Yeah, yeah, there's different shades and stuff like that. Oh, okay. It, it, it's then, definitely badass. Uh, yeah, so that one is my fourth, uh, I guess, uh, figure of that scale. Uh, and then my fifth figure of that scale is the Prime 1. Uh, Charles, if you can showcase. So this guy, I managed to track down one of this guy. And he is come, should be coming in about four months' time. Um, because it's shipping from China again as well. And it's 87 centimeters. So I would have five, like, huge... I'm going to try and post that photo of all five in a row. Uh, without breaking my back like i did last time with shin godzilla but uh, <laughs> i'm excited i can't wait to put in all in one row unfortunately uh i don't know where i'm gonna put this new two new figures because it's so massive but i will have to try and find a space put them in the so, bathtub yeah, that, but, no. you can leave them at my house if you need to for storage <laughs> no nah, yeah, help no, me yeah. uh are you going to get the king kong that goes with that there's a King Kong of that size. Yeah. Well, yeah, isn't right. there there's two that are like facing connect. each other? Yeah. No, no, this is no, no, this no. is a different this oh, is different. Okay. This this is even bigger than that one. <laughs> oh, so no yeah. King yeah. or no Kong with that one? No. No, no. They so only the made this is, one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the Kong you're talking about is a diorama. I have that one, the whole diorama. And so that one only comes up to this guy's thigh. The wow, top of his damn. thigh. Damn. Oh wow. my yeah, god, that thing is huge. Yeah. Yeah, it's huge. Three feet tall. Put him on your roof. He can be your weather vane. <laughs> so <laughs> those are my two acquisitions that should be coming in uh in the next uh few months. Not that one. I wish I, I hopefully I can find that one. And I'll be going to Japan next week, so I'll hopefully have more stuff to share next week. I mean next episode, sorry. Awesome. Awesome. All right. All right, guys. All right, I I'm sorry I I kicked you in front of me, homie, but I got some I got some stuff. So first, okay. uh, first my wife, full screen, Greg. Yeah, oh, hang on, hang on, let me full screen. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, there we go. There we go. There we go. So first, my wife got me this, and that's that's a light box. Um, and I can't wait. I'm on spring break this week. I'm going to take some photos this week. Finally, finally, I can take good photos of my cool collection. So I'm excited to have a light box finally. Um, but oh, yeah. as far as figures go, okay, here's the first one. This is a cute little thing right here. I traded Thomas Lee for this and, uh, it really is adorable. And it's this little pair of baby Ghidorah. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Right. I'm going to hang them oh. with fishing line. I'm going to hang them from the ceiling. That's cool. So, and I love I love blue Ghidoras. I just love blue me Ghidoras. Too. That reminds three. me of the uh, Trend, Trend Masters Bendy one. It yeah. kind of looks like that sculpt. All right. So the rest of my stuff here is it's all Shodai Goji. So I ordered this necktie and I didn't realize. Uh, so I got it for like $12. And then when it got to the warehouse and buy, it was $40 to ship it. And I was like, what the, what the fuck? $40 to ship a necktie? No, actually, I bought this bust. <laughs> and cool. the necktie is in there so there's the tie wow what yeah. i would not have That's expected cool. that to be a necktie in the bus what? yeah is it like a is it like a godzilla themed tie or is it yes just here tie? i'll show you real quick so dude what the heck that's so cool oh my god uh, i love it right? wow. That's cool. and, uh yeah. dr tim snyder told me that there's a there's a 62 with the bust and the necktie in it as well. So I'm gonna have to find that now because this bust is actually really cool. So, yeah, really and I wear a, I wear a necktie at my job um, every day. So I'm gonna put that in my classroom as like a, a spare tie in case my tie gets puked on by a kid or something. So, <laughs> um, and then, okay. So I got this, uh, this little pair of baby 54 yeah, and nice. he was, 
he was a steal on eBay. I just kept looking at it. And so then the seller hits me up and he said, make me an offer. So I just offered him a hundred. I didn't think he would take it and he did. So I got a really nice little 54 for a hundred. And then I got my first one up figure again, 54. And he comes with the airplane and the train in his hand is, uh, it's removable. Oh, nice. Yeah. And I like the colorway, the green and the brown and the yellow and the blue. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. So I was just on a, on a 54 kick this month. And uh, it, this this is the big reason why. Uh, oh, yeah. How much was it, Greg? How much was it? <laughs> uh, you know, I got this bad boy new in bag with the minifigure. Oh. Yep. So when you get a pilot ace new in bag, they have they have a minifigure. And so now I'm I'm I uh I have three of the minifigures. If I really want to go the full stretch, I should seek out the, the other seven that I'm missing. But um I do speak uh, a very small amount of Japanese, but I can read hiragana and katakana. And what that says is uh hold on, let's see. Uh, Torilo Baito. Torilo Baito. And look, it's the trilobite. But this that's awesome. This is the Pilot Ace 1954. It's the it was the second to last Pilot Ace I needed. And it popped up on Bai the the literally the week I got my tax return. And uh, a couple people messaged me and I said, if you if you are bidding on this, I will fight you for this and I will win that fight. Well, I won the fight. And to answer your question, Charles, this I got this bad boy for the low, low price of um eighteen hundred dollars. Shoo. Jeez. 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 I was gonna guess it was about that much. They're all that's an yeah. awesome one. Yeah. That's a really uh, you'll cool see one. it. And you'll see it in the next episode. But I have all the pilot aces now. I was just gonna say. I was gonna say. Oh. How many pilot aces do you have? I hope those are all the pilot aces. There's there's ten pilot ace Godzilla figures, and there's a couple pilot ace Harryhausen figures, and I would. I would go for those, but for whatever reason, um, Medicom somehow got a hold of the uh, the Harryhausen uh, um, molds, and so those have been reissued. And those, I, I, and the reissues are really good uh, to the point where you could possibly be fooled by it. So, as much as I love Harryhausen, I'm done with Pilot Ace with the Godzilla line, and I got them all. <sighs> No way, bro. You got to take Sufubi out of the bag, Garage Kid Goon. You have to. You got to let it breathe. You got to be able to play with it. This is one of my new favorite figures. The colorway is just stunning on it. And he's big. He's a lot. He's He takes up a lot of space on my 54 shelf. So I You got to be able to smell him too. Exactly. Nice Anastasia smell. knows. <laughs> I'm in love. <laughs> okay. That's it. Uh, That's it for me. And then, uh, no, we did, we done uh, post pod discussions. I want to bring up a topic, a uh, quick one. How much do you think uh, GXK is going to make in the cinemas? Oh, help me! I'm it. so glad you brought this up. I wanted all all of us to predict this. Yes, predict, predict. Let's do this. Hang on, let me bring back the group. All right, let's oh do yeah, this. hold on, Stop. real quick. Uh, before yeah. we get into that, Quinn, Quinn has a question. How long before you know your collection is complete? Now, why don't we all answer that real quick? All right. Uh, who wants to start? I'll, I'll start. I, uh, I think that it, 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 it will happen when you no longer have things that you can't live without. So, you know, there, there are a lot of things that, that I personally, um, you know, wouldn't mind owning, but I don't need them. Uh, and for me personally, like Ryu Oyama is my favorite sculptor and there, and I need to own everything that he's made. Um, but, but once I have all of that, everything else is just going to be, it would be nice, but I don't need it, you know? I can say no to it. I'm not going to be looking at it every single day for months, scared to pull the trigger, you know, because I'm going to go bankrupt. Like, but you know, it'll be nice when I get there, though. When I get everything he has, uh, I'm actually kind of close. Um, but kind of like with Greg and Pilot Ace, like when I get all the Oyama, you know, it's going to be a lot more chill <laughs> with yeah. the hunt. And so, I'll just jump in on that with my answer real quick. Like, I'm I'm at 
near I'm near the end. I 100% agree with Charles. That's exactly how I feel. And uh, Christopher says you should have a focused collection. Um, I have all of the pilot aces now, and I'm looking for one more Matongo, Toy Graph Matongo, Toy Graph Matongo, the adult, please. If anybody's got one, I'll buy one. Okay. Um, but now I'll just keep up with some new releases. But yeah, I'm, I'm almost there with the older figures, and that makes me really happy. So for me, my, my answer is going to sound a little dark, but. I think your collection is complete when you're dead <laughs> because like you can complete certain lines right um and those will be complete but for me i feel like i'm always going to be looking to like get the best version of like whatever articulated figure or if like a new safubi comes out you know that i just gotta have like things come out that you're just like oh you know i never thought i needed that but now that i see it i want it so for me it's either like gonna be complete when i'm dead and you know my family has to sell it off or i just quit collecting and then it's like well that was the completed version and now i'm selling it all that's just, that's how i feel about it yeah i was gonna say that too either deathbed or running out of money uh yeah. like although i'm pretty happy where my collection is right now i'm still constantly searching for like pieces that i want mainly the giga brain godoras i check mandarake what three times a day for a listing it's never going to end i don't think although it will like wax and wane like sometimes i'll be buying three figures a month sometimes mm -hmm. i won't buy one for six months at all and i'll still always be checking i still have that giga brain for you i know <laughs> i've been thinking about it non-stop i won't lie i literally mm -hmm. think about it like every few days i'm like oh i know one's out there now it's not going anywhere and uh, literally you have first dibs on it so don't worry about it it's a beautiful coloration that one one of my most wanted along with the See, blue lemonade one if you came to g fest you can pick it up in person i'm just saying mm, that's, <laughs> that's true, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. because greg is yeah. greg is uh driving so mm -hmm. you know yeah. it's not like he's going to be on a plane with limited you know suitcase space just saying. Yeah, I'll put my yeah. kids in the trunk and the figures in the back seat. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, that is such a good question, Queen Vario. Uh, I really like it. Um, I'm kind of like with Devin. Like, I, I'm a collector at heart. I, I need to be always constantly collecting. I don't think I can complete something, right? But for me, I uh, if you want to say a complete collection, I want to get everything that is in the same scale of uh the 85 centimeter or the 87 centimeter godzilla so everything in that scale i want to get essentially right now i have everything that's officially been released uh as a licensed piece so i'm really happy in the sense that that's complete uh in terms of older pieces the only thing that i want to get is the oxygen destroyer and the original 1954 poster other than this too i don't have anything old that i want to get I'm I'm happy with my collection, and from now on, here on out, it's always the new stuff. So if there's anything new, I'll probably pick it up. But it'll have to be something really unique or something really really big. So that's me. Do you guys do you want to talk about like maybe collections that you want to finish? Yeah, um, that you that are currently in progress. Sure. Oh, yeah. My my Matongo collection is very very close to finished. Um, I need the toy graph, like I said, and then it's it's pretty much there. There's a swimmy design lab, and I don't have that. It's very Good expensive luck. and it's very Good ugly. Yeah, yeah, it's it, I'm at the point where it's like it's so cost restrictive and it, it's it's ugly that I'm okay if I never get one. But if one popped yeah. up for cheap, cheap would be like five six hundred dollars for that thing. Um, I might jump on it. Um, there is, I'll give a little news right here. Um, Masami Yamada let me know that there will be a Knott's phosphorescent glow in the dark dropping in June. And I will. I think that's Knott's first glow in the dark, right? It, like yep. ever? Yep. And wow. I'll be Finally. all over that. I hope I win the lotto because if I don't, I guarantee that I'll be $1,000 in the secondary market. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Knott's goes for a lot. Um, so for me, like, uh, one thing I really want that has always been my goal since I started collecting in 2011 was when they first revealed the uh, the SH Monsters line. I 
you know, I fell in love with that line. Now I'm replacing some of the figures with Haya Toy stuff, but I want an SH Monster Arts figure of every Godzilla, every monster in the franchise that there's ever been. Once that is complete, I can finally say, you know what? I'm done with articulated yeah. Godzilla stuff. <laughs> SH Monster Arts Doug? Yeah, until then, we've we got a long way to go, so I'll probably be chasing that till I'm dead. <laughs> cool. Um, I have two goals, collecting wise. One is all X plus Ghidorahs. I am only missing four, I think, uh, but they're all the expensive ones like GMK, Kaiser, so just waiting nice. for a good price. And the second is all, or as many as I possibly can, Giga Brain King Ghidorahs. Even if they're just the slight coloration difference with the different paint on the tips, like the black one with the white and the black one with the silver, I just want them all. Now, I buy nearly everyone I see, but that's unfortunately left me with like mostly blue, blue King Ghidorahs. So it's like <laughs> mostly a blue collection. I've got four. So yeah, that's my main goal. And those. King Ghidorahs, I'm like willing to shell out almost anything for it. They are my one buy on site thing because they do not come up for sale ever. It, you, oh. I swear I've gone like eight months without seeing a single one. Then I've seen two in two weeks and uh, trying to make a trade or selling to get these. But yeah. That'll be an goals. awesome collection. That'll be Anastasia. Oh, yeah. uh, closed mouth or open mouth on King Ghidorah? Open. I love the closed mouth ones. They're just so much rarer, but open is just more common. I'd say my, I don't have any closed mouths actually for the Giga Brains. Were there any Giga Brain Ghidorahs at G Fest last year? Uh, I know there was a mouth storyboard. There was a closed mouth that sold for a lot of money and people were clowning. It sold for 900 and people were making fun of the guy who bought it. And, and it's like, you obviously don't know what you're talking about if you're making fun of this guy so no, i need to make fun of the guy that mouth. bought the knots for three thousand dollars right in front of me right in front of me that was crazy was that the painted noughts yeah. by violet vigilante uh -huh. okay yeah that was a beautiful figure but no, three thousand no. dollars no it wasn't painted by him it was just the standard oh. brown the standard oh brown that's one. not that okay never mind then that's awesome yeah oh, i think 1500 yeah. at most is like fair for that yeah. one but i got mine for a steal damn so. all right so charles we're gonna make this quick because charles gonna leave soon so charles let's go yeah yeah yeah, yeah. uh well we we're just answering the collection we need to finish yeah yes yeah yeah just just oyama uh i, I don't i'll probably one day get the, the first gmk that he did even though i don't like it i'll still buy it um, that's kind of the point that I'm at right now. Um, <laughs> and other than that, he did a devil man for, I think bulks back in, in like 2006. Uh, that's not the one I'm bidding on. It's a different one. Um, and other than that, he did, uh, some of the very early Harry Housen for X plus, um, the very early 30 centimeter, the dragon, the Hydra or whatever, or not the Hydra, but the, the dragon from Sinbad. He, he sculpted that thir the 30 centimeter one for X plus uh, his brother also did some um, and he did what else after that monster hunter I, I gotta get the monster hunter figure builders but uh, all of that stuff's cheap though I don't as far as the expensive things I only have like two or three left man that's it awesome hell yeah uh for me i just remember one uh older piece i want to get uh is the oyama godzilla clock that you have i really really love, love that piece that thing is sick i want to i want to get amazing. that and then uh i'm almost complete uh essentially uh, in a sense i'm pretty happy in a sense that it's complete which is the noroshi Orai uh b1 posters i have them all except for the uh final voice um the teaser one i don't have the teaser one except for that it's com a complete collection so i guess i only have that one more poster to complete the collection that's, uh, amazing. that's me that's amazing yeah. i'm really happy those are the, the those are the last two that i got i'm so happy it's not complete so yeah <laughs> before uh, let's before charles has to dip can we get his prediction on the worldwide gross for gxk yeah 
I was oh, going to yeah. say, let's actually end this, <laughs> end it on that. Um, yeah. So r- riding on the coattails of how well GVK did literally saved the box office post pandemic. Um, and riding on the success of uh, minus one winning an Oscar um, and seeing how Dune is performing. Cause if you don't remember Dune part one came out right before GVK did, those were the two big films that kind of brought back the box office. So it's happening again. Um, seeing how Dune has made over 500 million right now. Um, and it's outperforming the first one. I'm going to say this is going to outperform GVK. I'm, I'm thinking that, in the first two weeks, we're probably going to be probably going to see a six to seven hundred million dollar gross. Is what I'm predicting. Can um can wow. we find out how much GVK did real quick, or is that cheating? Close. To, I that. thought it was close, close to a did, billion, wasn't it? No, I thought it did five hundred. I'll find out. Close to okay. Yeah, I'll look it up. Real yeah, well, quick. Dune. So so uh, Dune Part Two in two weeks made more than what dune part one did in its entirety of being out okay so, so godzilla vs kong did 470 yeah okay that was big for post pandemic that was oh it was huge it was the first mega yeah. returns yeah yep yeah. so. Yeah. so i'm predicting six to seven hundred okay i'm gonna go okay. low uh i'm gonna say that it's gonna be successful but i'm gonna put it at 450 i think it's gonna do less than godzilla versus kong because i think godzilla versus kong was really riding that um we got to get out of our houses post pandemic momentum so um i'm gonna put it at 450. uh for me i uh you know i talk to my friends about this movie show them the trailer and they all say it looks stupid and none of them have any interest in going to see it um so that's just kind of like my feeler for this. You said Kong made or Kong made five hundred, right? Four seventy. Four seventy. And Man, King of the Monsters made three eighty seven. Hmm. Four fifty sounds like a good guess. Oh man, I don't know. I'm just gonna say five fifty. That's what I was thinking. So we'll go five. I think the kid. I think the kids are going to come out in troves, man. I think that it's not going to be the adults that make the money on this. It's going to be the parents bringing their kids. I think it's going to be mainly kids that are loving it. Yeah, five fifty would still be good. Curious what the budget is. And Anastasia. Yeah, I'm gonna, and I'm happy to be wrong about this. Say four hundred. Reason being, I think people are a bit burnt out on this franchise there has just been a Godzilla versus Kong movie. People may need, feel like they need, can't watch this without seeing the sequel. Sorry, the prequel, the previous movie. So yeah, I reckon 400. Yeah. We're guessing global gross. Right? Yeah, yeah, global. Yeah. yeah, global. Okay. All right. Just All right. Sure. So... I also love it when Australians say the word reckon. I just love it. Oh, I do. <laughs> <Do it. laughs> yeah, it's an Australian thing. Um, I'm gonna say high of 650, 750, highest. I don't see it beating 650, 750. Realistically, I think it's probably going to be closer to 450. All right, you gotta pick on. No, I'm just saying the best case yeah, scenario. And like, yeah, yeah. Oh, realistically, that, I think guess. 450. Okay, yeah, so if we average guess. out, if we average out our guesses, we're saying it's gonna make 500 million, and I think that's, yeah, right. I think that's a fair guess you know yeah all right we'll see we'll see yeah we'll see what happens all right don't <laughs> underestimate the power of toys Fact. don't underestimate the hype of him getting an oscar win i promise you i think a lot of like fans are going to be coming out of the closet to come see this that haven't seen the others because minus one was so big and i think it's kind of understood now with what uh yamazaki said you know, or, or not, was it Yamazaki? Who, who was it that said that uh, if it wasn't for the MonsterVerse, we wouldn't have gotten minus one? Was that Yamazaki? Yeah, yeah, it was him. I can't yeah. remember who said that. It was an interview. It was, yeah, I believe um, it was. Yeah, yeah. So seriously, I think that people are kind of waking up to the idea, like, you know, if these do well, then we're going to get more minus ones, shins, etc. I think Can even I just... if it makes 450, 500, just based on the the merchandise sales i mean there are so many godzilla toys everywhere now like i think the monsterverse is going well we already know it's going to continue monarch season two got greenlit 
I can't believe I just that. Want to quickly say, <laughs> can you imagine oh if God. they made a billion dollars? Like, bruh. Not gonna happen. No, no. I know it's not gonna happen, but if it did, <laughs> dude, that's it. Like, that's it. That's if it I happens. To be if it happens game. in one calendar year, Godzilla will have won an Oscar and made a billion bucks. There would have to be fucking Endgame, Infinity War type hype for Godzilla for it to hit a and billion. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> Captain Marvel made a billion. Ah, yeah, that be, that's because of Endgame hype, literally. <laughs> True, true. Well, it is a Marvel movie, but damn, that's crazy! It made a billion. Holy shit! That, but but that was one hundred percent because Marvel. It was in between. Right? You need to see it before you see the Avengers. Yeah, it oh, was in between Endgame one and two. Yeah, first one. Okay, I thought. You yeah, the newest like one made one. like thirty bucks. All right. Yeah, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> Hope it makes a billion, but you know, if it makes a half a billion, I'm happy. Honestly, for a Godzilla yeah. movie, that's amazing. Yeah, as long yeah. as they make a good profit, like maybe 200 mil profit, I'm sure we'll get more. Yeah, Godzilla is alive and well. We're definitely going to get more. All right. So since Charles got to go, uh, we'll keep it short. Actually, I have one more topic, but we'll keep it for the next episode. The next episode, I'm thinking I have to do a bit of traveling. So probably still be a month from now. So around the same time. Oh, shit. Hang on. I just want to say this. 800. 800. Damn mind. <laughs> <laughs> let's play some let's play some bets with chris <laughs> yeah, yeah. hey don't right. know it man you never know who knows Game i wonder how much great. make two made that's probably how much G, uh new new empire will make doom part two though has become a cultural event like the first Wait, film yeah. kind of woke people up to dune and the second film is a, it's a certifiable event like Wait, sorry, people jump down my too. throats when i say like i have issues with certain aspects of it <laughs> I, I meant to say All Meg right. too. I feel like this movie is on par with that. <laughs> Anyways, All right. um, thanks what everyone for watching. We appreciate it, uh, and uh, thanks for sticking around. It was like we had up to eleven or twelve people watching. That's awesome for our first episode. Uh, Queen Vario, thanks for sticking us out and giving us all those awesome questions and all that. And Chris, I love your inputs and stuff. So thank you. Keep it up. And uh, yeah, thanks everyone. I'll catch you guys next month. Hopefully. See ya. See ya. Thanks, Thanks for watching. Peace.